<clears throat> my people, my people, my people. This is Coach Sean and Coach Jay. The Broskis are back. We are in the house for one more time. Tapping in with you guys. Seeing how you're doing. Everybody come in. Please hit that like button. Let's start off running these numbers up. Get everybody in here. Much love to everybody in the chat. Starting off with us. How you doing, Coach Jay? I'm doing all right. Uh, like I told Coach Sean in the back, I, I pretty much been running around all day. Uh, had to kind of get my dog. You know, had to work on my dog. She had to get her neutered. All that type of jazz stuff like that. So, yeah, I've been pretty much I've been running all day, man. But like I said, I'm I'm back back here again and ready to get started. Yes, yes, yes. You guys hit that like button on the way in. I just seen some wonderful little things walking around my block. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, back in the house one more time. Me and Coach Jay, numbers going up. We here. We're doing big things. We tapped in today. We touched on the scrimmage this morning. Uh, shout out to Kimberly. Kimberly, what's up with you, bro? Hope that's you. Hope that's you in here. Um, we tapped in. You guys keep hitting those numbers as you come in. Um, run it up if you guys can. Run it on up if you guys can. Um, what you what you say about that scrimmage, Coach Jay? Um, I've seen a little bit of the highlights. Um, Austin Mack, man, looks looks. Austin Mack had an. Uh, pretty much, I heard all quarterbacks did really good. All quarterbacks really, really did uh, did pretty good so far. But what I've seen, I like the new implementation of uh, implementation of the offense and how a lot of these guys are starting to really adapt and pick it up very quickly. Um, defensively, we, I know we made some key plays. I don't. I don't know that much about the defense. I do know that there was some. There were some players that were able to go out there and make key plays, make some very key impressions. Um. But offensively, I heard Jam had a pretty solid day. I thought, you know, but, you know, I think the key takeaway was quarterback play was really, really good. Of course, I know everyone's got a, a little, they're a little skeptical on the on the Parker Brailsford situation. Um, you know, saying that he might not, might have been there. He could potentially transfer by the time spring window happens. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if that happens. I know we had to rock with Montgomery. Um, I know Montgomery, and I think there was like a few, I think there was one other name. Um, <clears throat> at, at, that was working at center over Parker. So, um, yeah, there's some there's some useful information, and again, there's like five different sources that are kind of claiming ourselves. I had you know I, I had to talk to somebody kind of about that as close to the program. Um, they kind of confirmed it. I I don't know. It, it's it's a lot of different sayings, but yeah, center is going to be a, that's going to be a, a very interesting piece to kind of look at now, and I know that for sure, especially if Parker Brosford does decide to enter his name in the transfer portal um but other than that i, I thought the biggest takeaway for, for for what i saw during the spring game was quarterback play you know you saw ty simpson do his thing um austin mack was really able to display his talent and just why he has those physical intangibles and that potential and uh, uh jalen miro right jalen miro working with the offense and, and, and pretty much showing showcasing why he's kind of qb1 um yeah. But I don't know, like, except because I, I didn't think I'd catch your your first time. Kind of what, like, what was some of your takeaways from the, from the spring? Because you, you probably have more useful information than I do. Yeah, I told, I talked about this morning. Um, I work, I, I worked. Uh, my old boss is a uh, a Yay Alabama guy. You know, he's a collective guy. They graduated from Alabama. Um, he he's since become one of the head guys at Raytheon over here on the Redstone Arsenal. Bear, what's up, Bear? Dwight, what's up, man? Steven Scuba, what's up with you? Kimberly, what's up with you? Hit that like button if you guys can on your way in, if you will. Um, him and Chad and um, mm -hmm. you know, William, you know, William Cole. These guys are all collective guys. And um, I talked about earlier that I had talked to these guys. They're not football guys, they're just donators. I talked to them. Ash was in the chat earlier. Um uh, you know, these guys had told me that um, they never said that Parker wasn't there. They never said that Parker Brelsford wasn't at practice. I just heard they didn't see him. Uh, mm -hmm. They were just like, well, we don't see him. We don't We don't see the other center. That's what I kept hearing. We don't see the other center. Um, Smoking Bud, what's up with you, bro? Roll Tide, man. So I hate to lose any offensive lineman, especially when they're of that caliber. Um, you know, I, I, I named a few guys and talked about a few guys earlier. That had big springs. They had big. I talked about um, uh, um, James Brockemeyer. I talked about Keanu Coit. 
I talked about Emmanuel Henderson, and I talked about Jeremiah Alexander. All these guys did exceptionally well. Um, if you had to pick one MVP on each side of the ball, um, as far as young players, it definitely would be Keanu Court and um, um, that's good. It's Emmanuel good to see Keanu. It's good to see him. Yeah, Emmanuel Henderson. You know, obviously the quarterbacks did well, but they said I heard that Emmanuel went off. Like he he went all the way off. Like he he was by far the best. Um, Where do they have him at? Do they have him at? Do they have him at X? Do they have him at at, at Z? I didn't or? ask. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't even get the details of which which spot he's playing. I would. That's actually a good question too, because that would tell me who's playing the other positions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that's actually a very good question. I'm gonna try to see if I can get find that out. Um, but he had a great scrimmage, man. He had a great scrimmage. You know, the court had a great scrimmage. Um, so I was very proud of those kids. Nicole Covington. I'm glad you're in here. The homie Bears in here. Gregory Pace is in here. Thank you guys. Hit that like button on your way in if you get a chance. Um, really would appreciate it. Um, so yeah, man, those those kids really, really, really stepped up and had a great, great scrimmage. Um, I told the people early this morning, Jay, I wasn't shocked that Jalen had a great scrimmage. Um, I I would be more, uh, I guess, surprised, Jerry, if 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 he had a bad scrimmage. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was very, very, very happy with that. And, uh, you know, it, it, I think we're right where we need to be. I don't think we're too far behind. I don't think we're too far ahead. I heard the tackle struggle a little bit. But, uh -oh. I, yeah, I told him earlier this morning that I honestly didn't think the tackles were, were, were going to ball out like that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being with the, with, the, uh, with the wolves and bandits that we have, um, I, I expected the tackles to struggle just a little bit, right? But I heard it wasn't just bad like that, like last year. I heard they, these guys were battling. They're okay. young. They're going to get better. Um, and I think our defense is just that good. I think these edges are just that good this year. And, uh, you know, that's that's where I kind of stand with it. What's up, Larry? Larry Lodge, what's up, bro? How you doing? YZ, what's up oh, with your bro? Living like Larry. Living like Larry, man. Yeah, that's... Okay, so, so for tackle play, I hope that is true, and I and I and I and I hope that I will say this for spring game two for the uh, for scrimmage for scrimmage number two, and for and obviously for eight a that is that is correct because let me I will say this. This is three years now where we that we said these edge rushers are just that good over our yeah. tackles, and then all of a sudden we 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 all we find out our tackles are just not that good. They got talent, but they're not that good. Yeah. So. I like the fact how they didn't get dominated because that's what we heard all last year was that they just got tore up the entire session. There was even, even to a point where I think it was not, it was not spring camp. It was, uh, it was fall camp during their scrimmages. And that's why I, you know, it might've been spring. It's where they allowed the fans to kind of go in and watch the scrimmages. It's not a day. It was a different scrimmage where they was fans and somebody recorded on YouTube. They had, they had like 40 minutes of footage of nothing but our tap was getting whipped. So, yeah. I, it's like you can call, like, 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 like I kind of talked about before. That's the one position, the uh, right that that group that that trench play, where if you can get whipped in spring, it, it, it's not it's not going to be easy getting getting you know getting a lot better. It's not, it's not going to be easy. You're just not going to make that transition. That 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 you know you're not, not going to flip that switch to all of a sudden being bad to being great. So I like it. I think there's some upside to it, but I do have some worries. Um, when I hear that a little bit, I ain't gonna lie to you, is that there's a little bit of worry that, you know, knowing our situation, we just lost another great tackle in JC Latham. We got a lot of youth, we got a lot of young talent. And um, yeah, uh, it's just one of those areas where it's been a weakness. Honestly, you can make an argument that the tackle group has been a weakness for the team for three years. And uh, hopefully, we, hopefully that can be straightened out a little bit, but there is some upside to it, of course. I agree, man. I agree. I have my, my pessimistic nature about certain things, too. Um, Cynthia Middleton, happy Easter to you. I hope you're having a great weekend. Mm -hmm. I hope everything's going well with you. hope everybody out there is having a great Easter weekend. Remember what this is for. Remember, no matter what your beliefs are, remember what this holiday is all about. Shout out to everybody about the out Easter there. Buddy, man. Yeah, man. Without a shadow of a doubt, man. A couple of eggs here and there, right? Mm -hmm. What's up, Marquita, my neighbor? Marquita, what's going on? Cynthia Middleton, what's going on? Kimberly Harmon. Man, matter of fact, hold on, they coming in now. Hit that like on the on the uh, way in if you guys can, man. 
So, Dwight, what's up with you, broski? Larry Large, what's up, bro? YZ, what's up with you, man? Roll tied to you. I'm going to try to say this, but please don't be upset if I mess it up. I can just say KI if you want. Because Soichi Kosi, I'm just going to say Kosi. Kosi, what's up with you, bro? You feeling roll tied to you, Kosi? Good to see you, man, for sure. Bad, what's up with your homie? Angela in the house, my homie from mm -hmm. Running the Table Sports TV, for sure. Yeah, Quay, we saw a snap too, man. But they said Keanu Court was just on another whole planet. The white in the house, my neighbor, Marquita's in the house. Cynthia Middleton, love seeing Cynthia's in here. Cynthia's in here, we got to get it cracking. Much love, Cynthia. Roll tied to you and your family, and happy Easter. Larry Large is in here, man. Uh, Katrina's in here. What's up, Katrina? I ain't seen you in a couple days. How you feeling? I might have just been missing you. How you feeling? Roll tied to you. Be blessed for sure. John M is in here. What's up, John M? Carla Bailey. What's up, Carla? I was looking for you as well. How you doing, Carla? Hope everything's going well with you. Goofball is in here. Chance for set is in here. Cynthia Middleton with the nine dollar super chat. Cynthia says, My bad, Jay. Love you, Coach Sean. Happy Easter. Remember that he has risen. Indeed. Indeed, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. All facts. I uh taken my little one to a play uh Sunday morning, man. About it. You know, much love, Cynthia. We all appreciate you for that. Nine dollar super chat. Thank you so very much for that, Cynthia. Mickey Pate is in the house. Uh big homie 334 is in the house. How you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. For sure. Ronald Thompson's in the house, brother goofball and patriot life is in the house if patriot life is in here coach jay we got to get it cracking oh this yeah this is what it is shout out to patriot life man what do you think coach jay i'm just wondering is patriot life a patriots fan I, i've always wondered that i've been wondering that for months i don't know patriot life you're a patriots fan can you please i i, I just i have to know because otherwise otherwise we're gonna have to be rivals and i don't know if i can shout you out anymore uh but no you know like i said shouts to the rest of the chat gil cruz i see gil cruz gil in, in the see building gil? yep yep gil cruz he's there He's right, oh, he's right here. Yeah, there he is. Shout out to Gil. What up, Gil? Shout out to the broski Gil, man. I ain't see you in here, Gil. Jim Parker. What's up, Steven Angle? What's mm -hmm. up, Steven? Hacker Music is in here. Janet Jarrett. Jarrett. Janet Forsett is in here. She got Auntie Janet. Uh oh. And I just like saying Janet Forsett. I just like saying her whole name. Oh, she changed her name? Auntie Janet. Oh, it is Auntie Janet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You got look if Patriot Life, Cynthia, and Auntie Janet are here, and Kimberly, and Marquita, and Carla, and Nicole. Man, listen, and Gil, we gotta get it cracking, bro. That's just what it is. The undefeated is cracking. Love y'all to death, man. Okay. Man, appreciate you, Gil. Love right back to you, man. Dark Wing Duck Double D is in here. Dwight is in here. You know if Dwight in here, you know what time it is right patriot life man you already know brother katrina is in here katrina is in here man katrina oh uh, uh oh Mr. yeah Lennon. man kb is in here man so cynthia you already know so yeah guys i was excited um about the scrimmage like i said this morning uh but the thing about me is you know it's the first i, I told him the other day jared i said one scrimmage does not make all oh, nicole covington's in here if nicole oh. covington's in here it's time to get it cracking. Nicole, I'm so glad to see you. Roll tied to you, man. For real, I'm so glad you're in here. Um, one scrimmage doesn't make the season, right? One scrimmage doesn't make the season, man. I did want to see the, the first scrimmage because for me, well, excuse me, regardless of, of, of workout videos and regardless of, of um, training videos, I wanted to see these guys face some adversity. I talked about I want to see these guys face some adversity. Linda Derry, roll tied to you, Linda. So glad you in here. Glad to see you, Linda. Thank you for coming. Uh, everybody loves Ebony. What's up with you, Double E? How you doing? How you doing, man? So, one scrimmage doesn't make the doesn't make the season, Coach Jay. You know how it is. You're going to have wins. You're going to have losses. You're going to have ups. You're going to have downs. Jay Cole is in the house. You know, how do these guys act, Coach Jay, when they face adversity? How do they act when they face adversity, Coach Jay? And that's what I wanted to see. No, yeah, I, I agree. And this is what the scrimmage kind of tells. This is, I mean, again, we're, we're banging. Pause. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's, you know, for, for the most, yeah, because you, know, you know how this chat is. This chat is immature. So I got to, <laughs> we got to start saying that for now on. Oh, Patriot Life with, hold on. I got, where's Patriot Life? I, I got you. I, I caught it. Is Patriot Life at it again? Yes, he is. I caught it just in the nick of time. Gifted five. 
memberships for Bama Football on YouTube. Shout out to my boy Patriot Life and Patriot Life. I seen that early one, man. The, the, the true, the, the true Patriot, the true veteran in this chat. We're, we're gonna have to give Patriot his own emotes. I've been, I've been trying to, I've been trying to tell Spook about that for a while. We have to try to give some of these uh, people their own emotes. Um, but no, I mean, I, I mean, that's something that we definitely went up against last year was adversity um, all throughout the entirety of the season, especially um, in the trenches. Um, that's something that we got to get better at, though. That we, 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 you know, this this is something where we have to definitely, you know, we have to we're going to get challenged a lot, right? So, facing adversity, right? Putting on the pads, putting on the helmets, right? Yeah. For the most part, smacking each other around. Um, you know, that's you know how how are, how are you going to overall? How are you going to bounce back? You know, and so mm -hmm. I I again we only seen like maybe a two minute clip of uh again if you go yeah. to Alabama's uh actual Twitter. Or I think their Instagram too. You can actually kind of see some of the highlights themselves. But players looked excited. That's one of the things that I really liked about it. Players looked excited. Um, everybody was supportive of each other, but everybody was definitely you. You can tell that these guys embraced the physicality. You can tell that these guys embraced um, just overall just wanting to go out there and hit. Right? right. I mean, these guys haven't really played football. Some has been for four or five months. You got a bunch of high school kids that are coming in. Right. I, I mean, trust me, like when you when you play like a different level of football, you you can't wait to put on the pads like you're going to be anxious. Um, you're going to be excited. But for the most part, like you want to see, OK, what what's college football all about? What's Alabama all about? What's playing in the stadium all about? And this we got a lot of young guys that's going to be playing in the spring game that has an opportunity to start, especially with this opportunity um, this year to potentially get on the to get to get meaningful playing time. So. You know, like I said, I liked it. Brand new scheme, offensively and defensively. Brand new coaching staff. Um, this is a great opportunity to make a first, uh, to make a great first impression overall wise in a kind of the in a, I'm not gonna say in a real life game situation, but kind of almost close to it, right? It's, it's almost like a simulation of what a real game, a real you know life you know game situation kind of is. So, like I said, we're closer to a day where we can actually see it live um, for two hours. Um, like I said, we'll, we're going to continue to, you know, keep you guys updated on just kind of what's been going on here. I know Coach Luke is going on right after us, so I'm pretty sure he has way more information than I think we do kind of here. Um, but overall wise, man, I mean, I like what I saw. You know, it's a great first scrimmage. Um, now we just got to keep it up. We got to keep it up and we got to get better. Let me catch that super chat, Coach Jenny. Oh, where's it at? Auntie Jenny. Auntie Jenny. Um... Let me get you right here. There it is. Oh, damn. I see it. Right here. Let's see. Auntie Janet with the 1999 Super Chat. She says, Auntie needs emoji. Needs an emoji coaches. Love y'all and roll time. Yes, you do. You know what? Like I said, we got to we gotta find a way to make it happen. We got to find a way. We, we got to have some of our own people get their own emojis. Yeah. Um, We got to find a way to do it. Because I ain't going to lie to you. I was shocked when I got my emoji. I'm like, why is my face here? And especially like with that photo. Because I like you, like everyone else got nice photos. I'm looking like... <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm like, what's I'm like, what's going on here, man? Like, I would have sent you. I, see, if I would have just known that I was gonna get an emoji, I had like nice pictures I would have sent, man. But uh, yeah, oh, me oh, too. What it is. You just, me you just too. got they, me in my hoodie. Me too, bro. They caught me at a Bama game, forehead sweaty, got a hat yeah. on, face looks shiny. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. Solid Cinco to God, graphics king right there, man. Um, thank you guys. Thank you, uh, Auntie Jen. Thank you, Jen and Forces. We mm -hmm. appreciate you for that. The whole staff. Jerry Willis. What's up, Jerry? Roll tide to you, Jerry. Roll tide, brother. How you feeling? Crimson Dad 813. What's up with you, man? How you guys doing? Glad you guys tapped in. Timothy Grant. Roll tide, man. Lisa fits you. What's up, Lisa? How you doing? You know what I mean? You want to get in shape? Holler at Lisa. Trust me. Glad to see you guys, man. Thank you guys for coming. Tapping in, man. Me and Coach Jay, uh, Antonio Snell, what's up with you, bro, bro? Just going over the scrimmage again, talking some highlights about the scrimmage, mm -hmm. um, talking some things that we wanted to see. I agree with you 100%, Coach Jay. I, I, I agree with you so very much, man. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's I tell the people this morning, playing on the offensive line is not like playing defensive line. The offensive line, it take a while, man. Even if you, you know, unless you Jonathan Ogden, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's, it's a process, man. It, it take mm -hmm. a while. Chemistry is a thing. Um, you know, playing tackle when you're young. This, and this is what I was saying. No matter how how um, talented these guys are, 
you can't supplant game experience you can't supplant game experience man jerry willis new member shout out to jerry willis jw what's up jerry roll tide bro thank you for becoming a member of the channel mm -hmm. we appreciate you more than you know you're awesome man welcome to the undefeated uh you family man tap in with us uh we definitely 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 appreciate you i can speak for kyle and t and everybody else when me and coach jay both say thank you roll tide to you jerry but offensive line wise coach jay it's different on the offensive line man it it, it you know we know i was telling the check k mac what's up bro it take a while on the offensive line you know especially when you're playing tackle out there on the edge and you're young and you don't have game reps it take a while guys it take a while to get chemistry with your teammates i expected to see us struggle a little bit in the scrimmage gil you know that you know how it is gil new tackle i expected us to have some up and down some some wins and losses but just like coach jay said i didn't want to see us just get destroyed right and i do think our defense coach jay is worthy this year what you think no i agree i mean d d defensively man i mean first of all it, it was a great in a way i will say this I, i've been talking about this entire season how i think the offense needs to kind of carry the defense this year i thought defensively that we were going to potentially take some sort of regression i think we still might be able to take that regression but i do think that it is a good sign especially with the more advanced uh a more advanced offensively analytically and just and just overall how they can simulate a lot of the situations on the football field i just thought that for the most part this defense was going to struggle right like this is a completely brand new offensive package i mean there is familiar uh, of course there's familiarity with the with the 425 that we kind of run a little bit yes overall wise the terminology may be different but as far as just what the it's as far as what the assignments grow it's not that much different from what we ran with, with saban uh especially last year when we had you know you know during that situation but offensively it was a different breed you know you saw dan landing with the kirby smart level defense really start to struggle you've seen a lot of defenses really struggle in that particular area so i so the fact that this defense was able to do you know whether it was the first team second team just a lot of our different uh, players was, was able to go out there and able to execute was pretty it was actually uh comforting it was actually very comforting because i i honestly thought first scrimmage offensively they were going to kick the defense's ass but the fact that they kind of really held their own there i think that kind of goes to show you man that yeah we got a lot of talent on this roster and if we can just kind of coach them up right and these guys can stay disciplined and keep focused you know the, the sky's going to be the limit for this overall team and i think that's kind of the one thing that we've it's honestly been missing the last couple years it's it's been it's been no i mean no you can make a legit argument maybe even going back further i'm going I'm, I'm taking this all the way back i i think you can make a legit argument that i want to say 2012 was the last year that we actually had a balanced team. And what I mean by that was the offense wasn't as the offense wasn't greater than the defense and the defense wasn't greater than yeah. the offense. It was strictly yeah. just these guys are 50 50 on the same level. And this includes national championship level teams, right? 2020, uh, 2020, less the offense was way greater than offense. the defense. Yeah. Matt way Jones greater. Yeah. That defense, you can make an argument, wasn't even elite. It was just a good defense, but the offense yeah. was way greater. 2017 the defense way greater than the offense right yeah. because the passing yeah. game simply just wasn't there we had a young Jalen Hurts manning the manning the manning the head 2015 the defense was way greater than the offense we simply yeah. just had the running game and a game managing quarterback and Jacob Coker yeah. 2012 was really the year where we had a advanced level quarterback in AJ McCarron who was top was a top five quarterback there in the country we had an elite offensive line arguably the best the greatest offensive line ever with chance and uh barrett and um uh, dj well, fluker uh, dj fluker right and the rest of uh, uh steams yep he was all the, he was the guard that was kind of the weakest person steam and, and a yep. freshman true freshman Quanjo. and then yep. you had coop and then you had cooper and the rest of those guys right i mean yep. i mean you know, uh, williams at, at tight end you had lacy and yeldon they both had a thousand yard rushing season never happened yep. before in alabama, in alabama school history I believe. and then defensively yep. they were also ranked number one ranked in, in, in the country so mm -hmm. for this season if we can somehow in some way establish balance where the offense isn't as greater than the defense, but the defense isn't as greater than the offense, it's just strictly like that that sort of level of balance where, you know, it could be top 25-ish level on both sides. Then I think this team could be very, very scary and very, very dangerous because that mm -hmm. means that the team doesn't really have any weaknesses. They don't have any huge uh, huge holes that you can that you really can exploit on either side of the ball, right? This year, like for last season, perfect example, 
the defense far greater than the offense. The offense had major holes that you can exploit, whether it was at the offensive line, whether it was at quarter, whether it was at quarterback, kind of confusing him with the different uh, sort of sort of uh, sort of coverages that they kind of ran. Like, if we can somehow establish that sort of balance, um, then I think yeah, I mean there'll be there'll be no holes to exploit and. That's a much more dangerous team than strictly just having, okay, one side's elite, but the other one is kind of good. I would love to have some sort of balance because we haven't really honestly had that since 2012. That's a whole fact, man. That's, that, was, that was an absolute great point, Coach Jay. Shout out to Dr. 334. What's up, Dr. 334? You already know James Crick. What's up, James? How you doing, brother? Hacker Music. Hacker had a good point right here. And I actually said this this morning, Hacker. I actually agree with you. Hacker Music says... I would be a little worried if the O-line dominated at this point. That's a key key quote right there at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I said the same thing. I said at this point, first real scrimmage, competition, game style, I expected the offensive line to have right. some struggles. Now, if the offensive line dominated the D-line, like you said, I'd be a little worried. Like, man, they mm -hmm. already beating them up like that right Just now. Just like how the defense dominates the offense. We'll be like, dude, why really? Three why, years in a, yeah. Four years in a row? Yep. Like you want to, you would love to see. Hey, offensively, there's, a, you know, if it's like an edge rusher versus a tackle, you want to see. Okay, this tackle one, he, he, this, this tackle one reps, but then there were some some occasions where the other, where the edge rusher won the reps. He was able to kind of beat it with yep. his some of the reps. Just having that balance, that's what, that's what, that's what kind of matters. That way, we can have it, we can find it. All facts, Cynthia. I mean, if the defense is playing well, that should keep us in every game. We need the offense to come around. At some point, Paul Smith, what's up with your brother? Roll Tide from Germany. Shout out to Paul Smith. Back, Cynthia, I agree with you 100%. Anytime you can have a great defense, it's going to keep us in the games in the SEC. Um, at some point, you got to score points, right? Shout out to Paul Smith again. Um, so I think we're right where we should be, right? I don't think it's any panic or any type of uh, bad things going on. Coach DeBoer seemed to have great energy. He seemed to have great energy. He seemed to be ecstatic. Um, I heard a lot of people talking about the team is actually farther along than even he thought. Jay Mims, what's up, Jay Mims? Glad you're in the house, brother. Roll Tide, man. And just like James Crick said, just like I said this morning, shout out to the basketball team, man. Let me give him another shout out. Um, oh, my for, gosh. Yeah, man. For the University of Alabama to be in the Elite Eight and beat a team yeah. like North Carolina who do well, but we don't defend well. And for us to beat them, with Baycott and 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 you know he yeah. got his, but for us to do what we did, shout out to Matt Farms. What's up, Matt? You know, shout out to the basketball team. Those guys are absolutely awesome. They did a great job, right, Coach Jay? And uh, what do you think about that game, Coach Jay? Oh my God! I mean, that was it was a hell of a game. It was a hell of a game, man. Um, that was Grant Nelson. That was the best game I think I've ever seen Grant Nelson play um, at the yes. University of Alabama. But it was such a weird game because we didn't defend well. We didn't. Re I mean, that yeah. we did not defend that defend well at all for four quarters. Um, we had our moments and we had our spots. Grant Nelson had major key blocks as a rim protector, um, yeah. but we shot the ball well. I mean, we shot over forty percent from three. We shot close to fifty percent from the field from, the, from field goal range. North Carolina, believe it or not, North Carolina for that entire game, even though they hit some, they they were able to hit some major shots. Um, yeah. And able to really, I mean, you can tell that North Carolina was, if we play that team 10 times, I'm so I'm taking North Carolina at least six times out of uh, 10. I'm just taking them. Yeah. Um, people got to realize, man, that the tournament, it is a one and done situation. It is a yeah. day. It is a game where if you do not show up and play your best ball, it's, it's, you know, you don't, you know, you, you're going to be out. We see it every single year in the tournament. Clemson, honestly, I had Clemson as a very dangerous team. I did not think they were going to make the Elite Eight, but this is hey, this is the tournament. This is where you have to show up. And Alabama they got a big one, man, right? Exactly. One one thing that we talked about with North with uh, with Alabama was the lack of having a big, a uh, lack of having that physical guy that can that that could dominate on the low block that can uh, on both sides, right? Be that run protector. And like I said, Grant Nelson had a really really good game, but. The major key reason why we won was because we shot well from three and we shot well from the field. We are one of the best offensive scoring teams in the country, top five in the in the country. And so for us, for us to have the ability to 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 not panic, we were down, we were down a lot. We faced a lot of adversity, but to not panic, guys like Rylan Griffin had it was tremendous as far as what he was able to do during the three. I see that. Uh you got uh, you got <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see that. 
Yeah, yeah you, you, had, you had you had you you had Estrada out there. My, I didn't even think Estrada was gonna play. The dude was on crutches before the game, yeah. and then he yeah. kind of came on there, and Estrada was and Estrada was able to kind of do his thing um, in terms of pulling up on short floaters. Um, was able to kind of drive in with no fear at all. Was able to make key shots from from from, from right from the wing and on top of the key. <clears throat> uh, Mark Sears doing Mark Sears things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we simply just made more plays. We simply got out there and we just made more key adjustments, made more key plays. And North Carolina, they blew a lot of opportunities. I know a lot of North Carolina fans today. They're gonna blame. Uh, they're gonna blame Cot. They're gonna blame Cot for missing that slam dunk. Because that slam dunk literally could have made a difference for at least at least I'm not gonna say to win the game, but at least taking that thing at least going to overtime. So yeah, I mean this was a day where I thought Alabama simply had one of their best nights as far as shooting the ball wise in this tournament, and North Carolina had one of their worst nights. And this is a tournament where if you do not bring a hundred percent, you are going to lose. It's you're not gonna make it out if you don't if you don't bring the full hundred percent. So we did a great job because North Carolina they are a number one seed for a reason. They're a very, very dangerous basketball school. Um, but if we can get past Clemson, then guess what? We're probably playing Connecticut. Our best hope, guys, I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to straight up let you guys know this right here. If Connecticut loses to Illinois, Alabama has a great chance of going to a national championship. If Connecticut plays Alabama, they still have a chance. Because like I said, at this point, it's, it's, it's anybody's game. Anybody's game. Anybody can reach it to the national championship. Hell, San Diego State made it to a national championship last season after beating us in a Sweet 16, which, by the way, is bull crap because if we would have won that freaking game, that was probably our national championship to win. We just went up against literally uh, a matchup that literally plagued us the entire year, which was rare. Um, but, guys, yeah, it, it, it's all about luck. It's all about luck, and it's all, you know, it, it's all about sometimes taking advantage of opportunities, and so far Alabama has done it. But we got to do – hey, we got to do the thing against Clemson. They they, they killed us uh, – at, at, at you know when we were on the road last time and hopefully we can get him again in los angeles tomorrow shout out to everybody in the chat man we got two partners back in the back we got two of our fellow compadres back in the back really 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 excited to see ty hayes man really really excited to see my broski coach smooth got the fellas back here man it's a it's a it's a family thing tonight all we need is jay merrill up in the house and kyle in here That's and it. he on the wheels of steel shout out to ty hayes shout out to coach smooth he in the house tonight man that's just what it is i was back there knee deep in some canes chicken <laughs> i was like oh, let me see what y'all are talking about here it is. Yes, what's sir. up y'all what's good man i see y'all talk about the game from last night man yeah, yeah man first was, elite eight in bama school history <laughs> crazy oh no i thought they said since 2004. So see, the broadcast, it might have been 2004. I, don't know. I, I, thought, I thought 2004 was the Sweet 16. I thought I was the Sweet so 16. They, they 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 said 2004 at first, but then they repeated two times that I heard that it was first. Hey, um, okay. So I okay. have no idea. I got conflicting yeah. information as well. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't give a yeah, dog on weed. I don't know. We I don't get I don't give a piss about none of that. We there. You know so let me man. get your thoughts, man. Let me get your thoughts, Ty. Let me get your thoughts. I know Smook already. He's a basketball guy. He got a good thought. Let me get your thoughts, Ty. What you think about last night on the game against uh, North Carolina? So I'm not I'm not super well versed into basketball, right? Like I, I just it was one of the few basketball games college wise I'd watched this year. But just from an analysis standpoint, the little bit I know about basketball, it was fascinating to watch. North Carolina tried to bang inside right? Take advantage yeah. of their size, their strength. And Nate hey, Oates and Alabama just had a beautiful thought process where we're going to go fast. We're going to make you tired. And are you going to be able to keep up with our pace? Like we might not be able to out physical you down low, but can you keep up with us? And it's kind of one of those things where styles make fights, right? I always liken everything to boxing or MMA. And it was very much well like you have a power puncher who might gas after round one as compared yeah. to someone who might not be able to put your lights out immediately. But come round two or three, they're still throwing full combinations and you're sitting there wondering, like, what in the world am I? So I thought it was an awesome game. I, I had an yeah. absolute blast watching it. But that's March Madness, gentlemen. Some of my most formidable yep. memories in sports are March, March Madness. Madness. Yep. And I'm not even that big of like a college basketball fan. That just speaks to the quality of the product. Yep. Ty, this is That's why I compare them to Mark D'Antonio, because even though their offensive philosophies may be a little bit different, 
one thing that I loved about Mark D'Antonio when he was with the when he, when he was with the Suns um, was that was when he first introduced that triangle on uh, that triangle offense. Yes, defensively they were terrible, but the 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 pace, the up like the pace, the uh, coach would coach you can test it is the pace, the, the 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 tempo, and shooters all around from on top of the key from the wing positions. It was relentless, um, man. And we got and, we got and, confirmation. And, we got confirmation oh. right there. I, I remember. Second lead eight. Yeah. And this will be, if they win, this will be that first final four. Final team. four. Okay. Well, we, they, got, yeah. well, we got that right. Yeah. That's, that's first final four ever. Start. Yep. What about you, Coach? What's your thoughts? thoughts? Patriot Life, time out. They trying to, they trying to. So I was acting up today on my, on my personal channel, y'all. I, y'all see your boy went out of guy. <laughs> Slowly. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I, let me, but let me tell you, your yeah, boy was out here in these streets. I'm for the streets tonight after the stream, y'all. I'm just letting y'all know. Outside with Coach Smoot, we for the streets. But anyways, uh, yeah, last night was that was the complete game. I know y'all remember talking me talking about how um, this was probably the best team to match up against as far as quality teams as, and teams that really earned their way into the to the to the tournament. Um, North Carolina, we know what they come with historically. But they have a different team now as of late. These past two or three years, they, they play a different brand of ball. And um, the way we were able to, able to match up last night, the main difference was Grant Nelson's effort. It wasn't that he dropped 20 or anything like that. It was the no, effort. It is effort yeah. I mean, just literally effort plays. It's a lot of those 50-50 plays um, that we usually would just not care about. That They show some They show some care. They show some, some get to it about themselves last night. But uh, one of the main things that I was excited about, and uh, I was live doing a live reaction to the game. We was doing live watch party on my channel. And um, it was a series in the second half, probably like eight eight minutes on the on the clock. And um, North Carolina, they, they had three shots and three offensive rebounds. And it didn't come out with the – they didn't come out with any points. And I think at this point, Alabama was up by two or might have been up by four at this point. But uh, if you look at the effort on the play, meaning like, yeah, they, we didn't get the rebounds that we, you know, that we could have had, should have had. But every time there was a pass, they they was swinging the ball. North Carolina was rotating the ball so smooth, man. And then you saw you saw the uh, defense just still running, uh, contesting the shots. And we ended up getting the rebound, pressing down court and extending the lead. So that that small iteration, that small little uh I guess you, yeah, you call it iteration. That small iteration there was huge to to what I believe needed to happen throughout the whole game. And Grant Grant Nelson finally becoming uh, a little bit more confident and aggressive with attacking the rim with on the offensive side. I mean, he he got he got a skill set. He's not a leader or anything, but he has a skill set. He got to use it, man, because he's not a true to me. Grant Nelson is not a true power forward. To me, I don't care if you're 6'10, 6'11. That don't make you a nah, problem. he's a three. He's yeah, definitely I said a, three. This morning. a three. He's yep. playing out of position right now, which is cool. But everybody got to be able to box out. Everybody should want to rebound, mm -hmm. right? Guard to, to, to the five, one to the five. You want to be able to guard and rebound, right? So he got it. He just got to maintain that consistency. Build off of this last game against a quality North Carolina team. Going to this Clemson game where you're going to have some true bigs that you're going to have to be disciplined. And when you're playing defense, and then it, it could turn out good for them. We got to shoot the ball well, though. I, I will say this: we do. If we if we shoot lower, I would say this: if we shoot lower than I would say thirty six or thirty five percent from three, and we shoot less than I would say we shoot less than forty five percent from the field, I I we're we're not winning the rebound battle against that team. Yeah, we're just, we're just not. So Man. we we got to find a way to potentially be more consistent from shooting from from those particular ranges. I'm glad you're a stat guy because I, I mm -hmm. broke down the uh, percentage thing this morning. I brought up the box scores comparing North Carolina and Clemson percentages. And Clemson did it. Uh, they didn't really shoot well against Arizona. They they no. won the rebound battle. They won. Yeah, they're they're a re they're a good defensive yeah. team. And and they 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 won the doggone uh fleet free throw percentage battle. You know, um, the foul trouble was definitely heavy on the Arizona side compared to Clemson. So, but y'all, that's enough about basketball. Well, hold on. Yeah. Listen, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go in when they play Clemson. I'm gonna be on my Jackie Moon. I'm gonna be out there punching people <laughs> in the Junum. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know. Undefeated, y'all know who Jackie Moon is. 
Undefeated, yeah. y'all, if y'all don't know who Jackie Moon is, y'all don't. One of the greatest basketball players to ever live. The GOAT, man. The GOAT. He, I mean, next to Kobe and and, and, and Mike, you got Jackie Moon. Jackie Moon, definitely third. And then LeBron. Then LeBron. I know I made some. No, LeBron. I, I hey, heard some hey Jackie Moon's that dude, though. <clears throat> hey, Let me Jerry. ask you this. You ever seen someone dunk with the with, – you ever seen LeBron dunk with that glorious afro that Never. Jackie Moon's got? Never. Never. We Never. Put Jackie Moon. We could put Mac, Jackie Moon, then MJ, and then Kobe, and then LeBron. Yeah, I agree oh, with Jackie that. Jackie Moon first. Okay. I, I agree uh, with that. Okay. Hey, no coffee argument. Black was the truth, though. Coffee Black was the truth. Yes, coffee he was. Black. You're right. Can, You're right, Dwight. That's on me. That's on me. Hey, enough about basketball, man. We got it. We had a lot of stuff happen in Bama football this week, y'all. And and, and I want we need to we need to handle some some business unfiltered. Right now, like we got the elephant in the room, right? That's the, that's what they 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 calling this right here. When we all in here, they calling this the elephant in the room. So we're gonna talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, one of the big things that I want to get, like, not necessarily unfiltered. I want to get more talk about this Caden Proctor situation, y'all. Caden Proctor coming back. Um, there's been rumors that he's here. I, I I've seen him, so it ain't a rumor. I've seen him here in town he i'm not saying he's on campus or walking around and at practice and then but he's here in town he's been seen with Wilkin and formby multiple times i mean he still got friends here so what's your what's your real feels about him possibly coming in and having a realistic chance to start you get what i'm saying like because from this spring practice and, and i expected this the d-line dominated the d-line dominated if if you go anywhere ask anybody one consistent thing with any report is that the d-line dominated so I guess we could start probably with Sean. I think Sean could pop this one off good. Caden Proctor, and then we'll go we'll go from there. Um, I, I I really thought about this, man. Like I told the chat, I don't have no problem with you coming back now, man. I mean, it's just obviously the process it is what it is. You know, it, it's a very weird process to me to transfer out, transfer back in. As a, I think the analogy that I used was. As an Alabama fan, I'm happy you came back because our tackles, we, we need depth, man. Yeah, We need competition at that position. But as a college football fan, I think it kind of sucks how this stuff is going because, yes, we won this time. But what happens next time when one of our guys leave and do all this stuff? So it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I I, I think Caden is, is – I think he owes some value coming back to the team because – just me, just me personally, I'm not sold with on nobody on that roster yet, you know, because I have to see them play. I, 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 you know, I know they're taking necessary steps to be great, and I agree with that. I think Wilkin Formey going to be, I think dude's going to have a great, I think all of them going to have a great career, honestly. I think Wilkin, I think Miles, and I think Olos, whatever position he play, it's going to be great. But I've seen Caden go through the ups and downs of a season, the struggles, the wins, the losses, the sacks. The domination of Georgia, you know, I want that competition in the room. I, I want him to push the other guys. So I think his presence can only make our room better. And uh I'm just waiting to see what happens. Jay, Jay, take it, man. What's uh, what's your what's your feels on Caden Park situation? I know you would I, I can't remember. Was you was you really for it? You was happy to have him come back? Oh, I no for no, no, I wasn't. Um I just because I care about loyalty. Um that's so that was I me. Feel. That's 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 yeah. where me and you was at. Okay, I feel you. Yeah, I, I'm one of those dudes where I'm just kind of like, man, I, I wish you nothing but the best. I understand that this is the business now, but this is loyalty, man. I mean, this is you know, it's all about loyalty. And if you leave, you're not coming back. I I, I went on record. And I said, listen, I wish the board was like Brent Venables, where mm -hmm. you know you decommit, or if you want to transfer, you're not. That's it. Where you're not going to be no longer associated with this program. Um, I will just say this because, like I said, I I. I how badly did the, did the tackles get whipped? Like, Too badly? Yeah. Well, in the time out for the scrimmage. Yeah. It was really the left tackle position, from what I'm hearing, yeah, bro. Uh, I mean, yeah. uh, but you got to think this is if if I want if I'm not being a fan, if I'm just talking about what I what I've seen from last year and <laughs> what people have lost uh, compared to what we have coming in and what we have returning. Our, our D line is the deepest and probably the most talented D line in the country right now. I mean, like from top to bottom, from one 
the the number one rated guy to the number 12 rated guy our one yeah, but twelve is more talented than a lot of people's one through five you get what i'm saying one through four right I, I i get it but i will say this we've been saying it for three years man i mean i mean and again i've got the last year's defensive line group was great i mean you're talking about nfl draft picks that you know that are literally going top 10 and like i said you, we could have there's a lot of rumors and speculation that there's going to be three dudes chris brasbro it looks like he might go in the first round he might actually go to a a team that i absolutely despise to because they're starting to like him but i'll, I'll mention that another time <laughs> chiefs but um i i, I will i will say this though I, that it it scares me because for three years when we when we when we've heard nothing but oh our offensive line are getting whipped but that's just because how great this defensive line is and how great tackle death is and how great edge rushing death is and, and we kind of just pass it by because they're saying okay well that's just Will Anderson, that's Dallas Turner, that's Chris Braswell, that's Allen. Like, those are just those guys, right? That's, you know, Drew Sanders. Like, those are those players. Like, it is what it is. We'll be fine if we go against somebody else. And then the actual, you know, it's like like we take off the sunglasses and it's like, okay, this is kind of – they've been we've been hearing about this from the beginning and it's no longer even a shock. So that's kind of – it's it's a concern of mine when I hear that, especially that there's weaknesses at, at particular positions on the offensive line only because it kind of tell you know it, it hasn't been fixed that's one of the things where it like we think it can improve very very fast by the time the season starts and it doesn't so that it's it's a little concerning um but if like i said if it continues to improve and we're just finding our rhythm and there's a lot of things to consider we like we're, you know brand new blocking scheme brand new offensive philosophy terminology so and uh, and of course we got brand new players kind of working in there so there's a lot of things that we got to consider but it is a little concerning that this is kind of like the third or fourth year where the defense has kind of whipped our offensive line a little bit and you know we take a look at the history and i think yeah i, I wouldn't be shocked if fans start to worry just a, just a tad bit so um, before i pass it to ty i i was privileged to run into two true freshmen today at the barbershop Sterling Dixon and Isaiah Fega, right? Isaiah Fega. I don't know why I keep saying Isaiah. And uh, just having small conversation in some of the chat, they were on my live when we were talking to them. I turned the mic off because, you know, there are stipulations that we have as media personalities and covering the team and things. So just having a, a conversation with Isaiah, um, and, you know, he, 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 when I started telling them who I know and where I was and when he was at this age, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, you ain't have no hair before. You know, that's how he, you know, he ended up remembering me. And so um, he was talking about Rodarius Morgan and some of these players. Um, but one thing he said, he said the old line is good. He said, it's just, we just deep, man. He said, we just deep, like literally, bro. So I, I would, I would go to, I would contest and say the reason why this left tackle position struggled yesterday because of a new scheme because honestly if things were like i i would say if this group was coming up and this was still saving era it would have been an even scrimmage because you know what they expect nobody knew what they expect coming into the scrimmage and that's how it played out yesterday and usually defense wins in those situations ty Caden proctor and this whole offensive line situation what you feeling so my take has always been as follows i, I agree Smook and Jance with what y'all are saying. In an idealistic world, loyalty is, you know, it supersedes everything. Unfortunately, I think that we left the idealistic world that, you know, we may have viewed college football under long ago. And yeah. I, I agree with you, Jance, about Brent Venable's principle about the visiting thing. But here's always been my thing with Brent Venable's principle is it's not a loyalty thing for Brent Venables. He likened recruiting to dating, and he's like, oh, well, if you're committed, you're not going to then go date other people. But Brent Venables is perfectly fine with getting someone else's girlfriend in there, right? If right. you're after people who display loyalty, then you wouldn't try and flip someone else because they would have that characteristic that you didn't want. You get what I mean? So at, at a certain point, you're not after loyalty. You're after class security. And I'm yeah. cool with that. I'm 100% fine with that. But Peyton Bowen is a great example, right? If you want people who display unbridled loyalty, why are you going with someone who has displayed anything but? It's all a business decision. Mm. And for me, at the end of the day, if the team wanted him back, if the team okayed it, that's where I'm like, all right, 
that's where the buck stops. Now, I don't know whether they did or not. That's just me saying this. I do agree with you, though. In a perfect world, I would be much the same mindset as you, Jansen, as you, Smook, where it's just like, okay, you, you chose to go elsewhere. It is what it is. I do think with Proctor, there's a lot of circumstance that, that makes it a far more nuanced conversation than just like, oh, well, he just... You know, you had Saban leaving. You had all of these things, and he had an up and down year, homesick. It is what it is. In terms of him coming back, everything has to be earned. Yep. The la yeah. the, I will be worried if it's already known that, like, oh, well, you're just going to be given the starting left tackle spot. They can think, hey, you're going to earn it back, and that's perfectly fine. But if it's just given, that's where I'm going to be a little bit hesitant. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I, I'm I'm at the point where if the team wants him back, then welcome back. And that's where I'm at, y'all. At the end of the day, I'm I, I've never I don't think I've ever denied. I don't think myself or Jance or Coach Sean or Coach Ty or, or Ty, we've never denied the talent that the, the fact that we need bodies there, like able bodies. I think the loyalty thing is just the biggest thing for me because if it doesn't work out and he what if what if they don't feel like he's earned it week three week four is he going to stop giving that effort after the georgia game we when we whoop georgia without him being a starter will he still give that same effort to show that he wants to be here so that's the mentality i want them to challenge let's let's make him prove that he wants to be here before we go on to another another topic y'all i need to get a picture with my bros real quick so, fellas, I need y'all. I think we're going to play an ad. Nah, nah, we ain't going to do an ad. We ain't doing a commercial yet. We ain't, we're going to do a commercial at, at the hour mark. But I need y'all to get y'all self together. And I'm going to screenshot this. I'm going to screenshot alert. And I'm going to tweet this out so that we can get some more bodies in here. Because oh, Hold on, people. give me a second before you do it. Don't give grab no me. oil. Do you better no, not I'm, grab not, no I'm not getting any oil. Just give me one second, please. You better not grab no lotion. You better not grab no oil. Look, look at Ty, He's going to put on his Sunday best. Oh, Lord. Sean, you, you, no, you need some Carmax? Or did you get huh? straight? Did you, did, you got Carmax already? You already Carmaxed Girl. up? Oh, no. I ain't tapped right now. I'm good in moist oh, right now, so I'm good. Hold on. Did, <laughs> did, did, did y'all... <laughs> No, nah, did did y'all see... Did y'all see good, the Drewski no. interview with him and Theo Vaughn? Yes, bro. And he was mm -hmm. like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, us being white, we just kind of <laughs> wait until the lips start. <laughs> that boy Drewski <laughs> crazy, man. Man, that boy is crazy. Drewski and Roll Tide Willie are epic, bro. Together, yeah. that is the, I promise you, when Drewski and World Tide Willie did that video going into Mercedes-Benz Stadium, yeah. that was probably the funniest crap I have ever seen in my life as a content yeah. creator. I wanted to stop creating content because Drewski took it he took it with that one bro when he was able to get willie and willie y'all know willie is like the most innocent heart hearted person ever and he just loved bama football yeah. drewski put willie on like no other and drewski is for real a bama fan i hope y'all know that now like he's he because of roll tie willie drewski is a real bama fan like drewski talking about he want access to yay alabama he want to contribute like for real so i'm working ah oh, snap <laughs> Look at it. I knew it. Come on, let's I get knew it. it. I knew it. Because Jay's hey, going to go on a mission tonight. <laughs> I, I'm Listen. giving you guys a sneak preview of what April 17th is going to look like when we stream for this portal. Because when Judgment Day hits, guys, I'm telling you, we playing the Game of Thrones music. And this, I'm telling you. No, we, I'm, we, we, I'm, we I swear to you. We I'm coming in here dressed everybody. like Gandalf that day. I'm gonna have I'm, a beard. I'll have the pointed hat. I'll have a staff in here. It's over. It's over. It's over. Hey, listen. One, two, three. We got it. I think you this put is on good. The shiesty one. mask. My God. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. I'm telling you guys right now, April 17th. This is what we're getting, guys. We are we're we're creeping, stealing. Let me get one creeping more. That, that one was ugly. I bite my lip and jump like I'm at. You don't have to be lonely, face I have. Look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At farmersonly.com. Hey, listen. It's a, a good one right here. Blaze said some unfortunate things about farmersonly.com and their connection to Auburn. Uh, and I'd like to formally apologize on behalf of any. Uh, well, you know, you said something about whenever Blaze got on with you the other day, you said something about. Uh, 
about I, I don't know what it was about picking someone up or it was something to that effect and and blaze hit you with now coach smook you ain't no our auburn fan you ain't over there on farmersonly.com. yeah yeah and that's just real unfortunate that he lumped all those good people together in that manner. Oh I, I my god! Apologize on behalf yeah. of Blaze. Blaze do be going crazy, y'all. I'm glad he he not available tonight. Let's just say that I'm glad Blaze is not here tonight. Um, we trying to stay on the air, so it's good to know that Blaze, <laughs> y'all. Blaze, he's at boot camp right now. I sent him away. Son, when you meet Blaze, brother, I think I saw him. I was at work watching, you know, listening, like trying to support the channel. And I think I got a glimpse. I didn't. I didn't relegate the name with the with the, with with the young man, but now Ridiculous. that I have heard the description, I know exactly who you're talking about. R Ridiculous. Exactly talking I, about. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just say that. R Ridiculous. Blaze. Yeah. Blaze has yeah. no home training. Um, I mean, it's it's not a secret. Uh, Blaze don't care about. He don't give a piss about nothing. You know, him and Willie should be twins because he really don't right. give a piss about nothing. You know what I'm saying? So uh but yeah y'all uh what's the next hot topic i was going to bring to us because it's, it's been some good ones this week oh Defense, all right defensive so, back. yeah the defensive backs i was just about to say let's get into it man uh the the the, the word on the street was uh that there were there were there were no touchdown passes there was one thrown by ty simpson but it got called back right um and, and charlie Potter confirmed right there was a, there was a touchdown one touchdown pass thrown by ty simpson broken down play he goes and makes a play you know gets outside um but nobody was smooth the secondary Rodarius morgan showed up again uh i mean right yeah. there red morgan yeah right there's going crazy looking like he might end up being the official starter man like he wow. is really trending right now wow, and that's um, crazy him and malachi keon sab that safety trio mm -hmm. right in the middle you know separating that husky rover free position um i'm excited man then the boundary damani jackson they said damani jackson is doing work solid tackling main thing yeah. i wanted to hear wide receivers still getting what they can get you know but in his first skirmish they said the defense really showed up uh they gave up four scores out of the i think i think they did the 12 drive type type yeah. scrimmage um so uh it, it's it's good news to hear let's 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 reverse it this time ty uh secondary how, how's your feels I know you had a lot of like questions about the young guys being pushed out there, but now hearing some of this stuff coming out, what's 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 your feels on it? Oh, and let's understand. My questions were always like, okay, how fast are they going to come to speed because of this offense? It wasn't a question as like, do we have the talent? It was a question of you have this high powered offense that's going to throw a lot. It's going to get these guys up to speed quickly. What does that look like? Coach Sean, you know, there's a guy that I, you probably already know where I'm going here because you know the guy early signing day. Last five minutes of our last stream on early signing day, I looked at you and said, Coach Son, Bama signed an incredible DB class, but there's one guy out there that I want, Zay Mincy. Yes, John, yeah. Zay Mincy, I think, is going to be such a problem. For teams, whether that happens this year, whether that happens in the future, it, it it's bound to happen. You know that that's the case. Whenever people who cover other teams are quote tweeting Bama's video saying the SEC is about to have a real tough time with Zay Mincy, uh, yeah. a guy I know that covers high school football, or he covered it down here in Texas. Just actually went up to Nebraska to cover their team unbelievable content creator tim shout out to you happy you're continuing on in the industry because you are truly a bright spot within the industry he was quote tweeting saying zay mincy is going to be a problem for sec yeah. offenses his length his physicality he was on jeremy Murdard like stink on poop i yes. mean it was right there yes but also yeah. guys damani jackson if we can get his tendencies right shout out to mo linguist Really excited about that. The cat ran a 10 2 5. Yep. He is a, a freak fact. athlete. Like a, a real freak athlete. So, Athletes so Ty, Ty, I don't mean to jump in your comment. No, please, but please. Not, not only Damani, but you got Jalen Mbakwe. Mbakwe, exactly. Getting the first team reps on the other side. That is crazy to me. Like, y'all remember how critical I was of Mbakwe because he hasn't played defense primarily for two years, the last two years of his high school career. And he's at Alabama. He's put on 15 pounds of freaking muscle. Like yeah. this dude is a is a 
a mini muscle. Like he's just a muscle. And then he gets out there, skinny legs and all, and he's out there just nobody's burning in Bakwe. You're not burning this kid, man. So I, I I mean, our secondary, and we have we know what we have at the talent uh position at the wide receiver. We know if, what we have as far as talent. Our secondary is shaping up to be like the secondary that we want and then they they're in this scheme where they're basically playing soft man all day i mean <laughs> what what more can you ask for Ty? if you if you done we'll pass it to sean yeah no i'm uh, just i'm just laughing at myself someone said that coach jay looks hot in that mask and i hit him with the uh the ever viral quote man's not hot it's actually cold, man. It's actually, it's like it's like cold. It's like thirty-two degrees out right now. It's like thirty-two degrees in this house. Oh I'm man! Hey, hey, listen, uh, Cinco, and then Sean. I want you to uh, get get tie your tie your feel about this DB uh, group into this question right here too. Yeah, I've seen the video. I hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen it, Cinco. I hadn't seen it. Um, the DBs for me, man. I just want to know about the corners. I wasn't really concerned about the safeties. The, the if you will, weak safety, strong safety. I wasn't concerned about those guys, um, you know, running the alley, playing the rover, you know, coming down. I wasn't concerned about those guys at all. I wanted to know opposite the money, who was going to be able to, um, you know, really, really contribute that corner. That was my thing. Um, the money, I knew once the money get in here and get comfortable and get his feet wet, I knew he'd be fine. The kid is an athlete. He was coming to Bama straight out of high school, but last minute obviously home team started to call he ended up at usc um this is a kid that can play man i watched i did a breakdown on damani and he can play um if you put him in man the kid can play if you put him in off coverage the kid can play um he wasn't healthy at usc people forget there too he got hurt there yeah. So, ACL before you even yeah. got to campus yeah so i wanted to see opposite damani who was going to step up and play whether it's Jalen and blockway whether it's Xavier and brown whether it's xavier mincy uh, whether it's some, anybody, just let me know who's on the other side, and uh, I'll be happy with that. I'm pretty confident in anybody they put over there in this defense, um, but I'm just ecstatic to see even Jalen Mbakwe. I'm ecstatic to see anybody over there play. I just wanted to know who it was so I could get a feel for them, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy about it, man. I'm totally happy with it and totally satisfied with it. Hey, the crazy thing is, y'all remember we, we said that uh, – I remember that we was talking about like if if we had to have an all freshman team start this year. I remember I was saying like, excuse me. I remember I was saying like the uh, the defense would probably carry because that talent on the defensive side is legit. From the front to the linebackers, we were talking about the only thing we were really talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we trying to be professional, y'all. We. <laughs> Any from South Park? Hell no. We try, we try to look professional, y'all. <laughs> Coach Boo, you ain't making any points anymore, dog. You, you ain't making no points anymore, man. <laughs> oh, we, bro. Sink out, chill, bro. Listen. Look, man, no more points, look, I'm, about to, look, I'm about to walk down to the concession stand. Hold on, y'all. Let me go down to the concession <laughs> Let me go down to the concession stand, y'all. Hold on. I got to go get some... I'm gonna go get a glizzy because that's <laughs> y'all. Y'all is a trip, man. Why y'all act up so bad, man? Hey, I love it's all right that. Now, yeah, I see, see the, you know see, what's crazy though? As soon, you know, as soon as you get them heated up, that's what happens, man. It's over. Hey, it's all right. Jay, over. You, you know what's crazy though? It's people that come in and don't comment because our chat is so entertaining. Like that, exactly. It's like like people love our chat. They I don't think listen, undefeated. Fan funders, the ones that are active every day, regardless if we live at 9 a.m. or 10 p.m. The ones that are active, y'all really make this show. Y'all make it easy for us. I, I know I speak for all of us when I say that. But the 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 chat, y'all make it because yeah. when we're in debates and disagreements, y'all fire. When when we agreeing, y'all fire. When we chilling, y'all fire. So keep this energy up. I appreciate y'all 100%. But back to the point, man. Uh yeah, Jalen Mbakwe, him him getting the type of uh, recognition and the reps that he's getting with the type with the team, the first team, yeah. that's that says a lot, man. Because now we look at portal season, right? Everybody was ready for Will Johnson to come. 
do we really want to go out and gamble again will johnson when we see mbakwe showing the type of improve i'd rather i'd rather say let mbakwe play next to malachi let him play next to Devonte. you know whoever's at that rover position and let him yeah. grow let him grow this year put him put him in the boundary and let him grow coach jay your feels on the secondary and 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 then you could ask I, have you seen the video from the, mm -hmm. the, the scrimmage okay yeah, yeah. so you can I ask think, me. You i like what i saw from austin mack yeah just real quick i i like what i saw from him so far right i like what i saw from all from all these quarterbacks and just how you know they were able to kind of adapt to to this play style right jim Miro, Miro's clearly won the job right i know there's a lot of haters about that he's he's won that job it's over it's pretty much who's fighting for qb2 at this point but i like what i saw from all two man like ty simpson just his his like his ball placement and just now increasing on the level of uh, those second to third level type throws um i think it's very very important for this offense awesome Mac, you see the physical intangibles like you see with this guy right it's just about really putting all the key pieces together and even like a Dylan lonergan i thought for the most part has that some some physical upside to his game but though no, this secondary is hot man this, this secondary is this secondary is is is, is man's got hot man i'm telling you uh jay like jaylen and Baco, like he just says got the speed uh, we, you know, we, we saw, you know, from some of those other guys, it's, it's, I, I'm actually really, really impressed with what I'm seeing so far for this, you know, like I told coach John that the fact that like, we, we talk about this team having balance, right? We, you can make a legit argument. This team hasn't had any, has, hasn't really had that, 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 that balance, that actually continuity balance where the offense isn't as greater as the, as, as the defense, the defense is greater than the offense. We honestly haven't really had that since 2012, I, I mean, 2012. Um, but no, it's it's really really awesome to see, man, that the secondary, that this defense, especially kind of working with a brand new coaching staff, um, with terminology and the amount of young guys that's that's, it, that's we're able to kind of step into the play and able to go out there and make plays. That's actually really really good to see. I'm very curious what's going on, what's going to happen with the second scrimmage, including a day, um, because of we'll see if the offense can really start to really adapt and, they, and if they can take over. Uh, but overall, wise, no, I, I love what I see so far from this young secondary. Coach Sean, Coach Sean, I want you to talk a little bit more about the secondary because you had some good breakdowns with Damani Jackson. Um, what about what about uh, Keon Sab? What you been hearing about him? Good things, good things. They, um, I heard he he they had him playing both safety spots, and uh, yep, he, he, yep. I had no worry about Keon. This kid, um, the two guys that started over Keon were very very good players, man. You know, even though Keon played. You know, even though he he practiced was a starter himself, right? I had no worry about Keon Sab at all. I had no worry about in this scheme. I had no worry about him, right? This kid's gonna be do good things for us, man. Um, I won't, you know, I I want to say something, but I don't want to jinx it. I know we lost a great player at that position, but I don't have no worry that Keon could come in and perform just as well Ooh. under the circumstance. Ooh. Tell the truth, though. Tell the I truth. don't have facts. Like, I don't have no worry about that. Know the truth. Our fans need to know that truth. That's I don't have no worry that, that facts, Coach Mook. I don't have no. I mean, Caleb is a great player, and I take nothing from Caleb down. Best high school kid playing safety I've ever saw. Right, but I think statistically and for this defense, Keon Sab can come right in, pick right back up where we left off. I have no worry about that whatsoever. I may promise I, you, I don't. May I add something into that before we roll? Yes, this? sir. Yes, sir. Sean, you want to know why you're not and listen, ladies and gentlemen, there's opinions and then there's reality. And Sean just hit you with reality. Now, in, in, in terms of like the ca caliber of player. Yeah. Last year, they had the, the highest graded safeties that had ended up transferring. Caleb Downs was number one. Right. Yeah. I think it was an chance. I know you'll probably you're you're so good with stats. It was something like an eighty five point two. Something that sound about right, Jance. That was his PFF grade. Well, oh, Sab, no, the Caleb? yeah, it was like an eighty-five yeah. point two. Oh, something that was higher like than that. It was um, it was eighty-eight or close. Eighty-eight point six or something well, like that. Was it, was it, okay. Well, yeah. here, here's what I know. Sab was two points behind him. Yeah. So wherever Caleb was, Sab was two graded two points lower and didn't have the snap count. Now. You can read into that one of two ways. The way I read into that is we saw Caleb grow with an increased snap load. Sab was still one of the top safeties in the nation. He didn't get to learn in the fire like Caleb Downs did. So, Coach, you're 100% right. Statistically speaking, I'm not yeah. saying that he's going to be better than Caleb Downs. But what I am saying is right. Alabama got an incredible 
safety from the transfer portal that can Mm -hmm. fit into this defense and be an instant answer. And that that's powerful. Factual. Factual. And I think, I think that's what, I think that's the message we want to everybody to see. Nobody can replace Caleb Downs, but if you had to go out and get somebody to fill the void and be confident, Keon Sab was that dude. You get what I'm saying? And even, even losing Terry on and and, and Kool-Aid, like, mm-hmm. of course, Will Johnson would be a a, a, a god sent to be the second guy. But to have Damani Jackson, that is like, you're, you're talking yeah. about, and this is no slight at Kool-Aid. But if Kool-Aid, Damani, and Terrion are on the same roster, you know, Damani, Damani and Terrion are starting yeah. in front of Kool-Aid. D- you that's think? My, yes, 100%. Oh, no, man. I think, uh-huh. I think it'd be, okay, looking at where... Damani came from Kool-Aid was a just a technical cat right out of high school right like I I might man that's tough but I might yeah, have to carry in Kool-Aid oh, we, oh. you got to catch that time that's a 50 piece we got to catch we the, got 50, the 50 we got the 50 dollar donation from Ephraim for our masked guest host yeah I don't know why Jance is making that face at me right now I, I don't understand you it. know why <laughs> I got all. You know why? You, you know perfectly why I'm making it. Hey, I won't be doing none of that because I don't went to the doggone barber shop and I'm outside, baby. I'm outside. I'm for the streets. I can't do it right now. You see this? I got that Kool Aid. Hey, listen. So this the I'm funny. Partial, this the, I'm partial to Kool Aid, though. I will say that. Like this. This is the running joke with the uh, with my haircut. So I go to the same barber that Kool Aid. All the Bama players go to right, right here. And uh, uh. When I seen Kool-Aid McKinstry after I got my fresh cut, and I, yeah, I remember I came to, when I came to T Town, I was looking kind of rough. And I was still, you know, going through it. But Kool-Aid seen me on the sideline of that first media view in practice. And he remember, you know, we done had crosses in the past. And I said, What's up, bro, bro? You know, he's like, What's up, man? He's like, he looked at my head like he said, Oh, you went and got that Kool-Aid McKinstry special. He said, You got that Kool-Aid special. And so that's like a running joke when I go to the barbershop now. And so, yeah, I had to go and get that Kool-Aid spray. If y'all go look at Kool-Aid hairline, that dude had the most crisp hairlines after playing yeah. in the full four, four quarters of a game. I'd be like, how? And I go to that barber. This is going to be like this for about six days, y'all. I'm telling you, it's going to be crisp like this for six days. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. But anyway, back to the uh, subject. Hey, so what we was about to do is look at the video. Uh, everybody hasn't been able to see the, the hype video from the spring game. I'm going to tell y'all right now, this bad boy right here, it gives a lot of uh it gives a lot of like okay offense was great but i'm telling y'all right now defense won the day and it wasn't it, it wasn't close and that's not to say anything negative about the offense because there was a phase it's like a phase building type thing with this offense how kaylin the board and the staff want to structure it they were really focusing on developing and instilling the run game so this highlights y'all about to see they're going to see a lot of the good stuff you know like you should when you create highlights so Let's jump into it. Let's see if we can get into it. Make sure I, I hopefully I don't get us. Watch for 12, copyright. Coach Sean. That's a Mincy. Yeah, hey. facts. You've been on Zay for a while, Ty. You was the hey, first. You remember when I said I, I don't think they're going to move into safety? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm telling you, because the boy is a corner. He is a corner. He can, he the, is. the problem is, is he can, well, I say problem. Problem, for lack of a better word. The problem is, is the boy can play anything. Anything. But he is a corner. I'm a, true, I'm a, true, 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 true. I love that about it. Here we go. Crank it up. The first scrimmage is a lot about that. Just playing ball. All right. And the key is to get better every play. I'm going to go out here and get people what they want, man. Ooh. 
Gotta I'm ready to suit it. up. I'm ready to suit up, bro. Gotta Let's love go. it, bro. Man, one go, of my bro. favorite frames is Jalen mm. Milrow and going Ty. Damn Miller and like that. That, Bro, really, that. I said no. this the other day, gentlemen, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pat. Alabama has been so lucky not only to have an uncommon caliber of athlete at the quarterback position, but an uncommon caliber of human being at the mm -hmm. quarterback position too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jalen Hurts, Jalen Milrow, all of these guys. Just Jalen Milrow, man, that guy, his dedication, his work ethic, his humility, it, it, it honestly gives it, – it's inspiring to see. He's a heck of a teammate, heck of an ambassador for the university. So I got to bring some clarity to the highlights. Both passing touchdowns that you saw were called back because of penalties downfield, which is, which is something they expected. Guys were being extra aggressive. They were antsy. Both passing touchdowns were called back. One was thrown by Jalen Monroe. One was thrown by Ty Simpson. Now, what I will say is this. These wide receivers and this tight end, this receiving core, is something different, y'all. Did y'all see Danny Lewis? I mean, just bag. Just bag, bro. Did you see I mean, Jeremy Bernard he, climb the ladder? Yes. Ooh. Like, people – I don't think people realize what we're working with right now. And, and Was and that yes, five? Yeah. Was he number five? Yeah. Yes. And that yeah. was who Zay Mincy was locked up on when Zay almost had the interception. Like those two are iron They're sharp dogs, iron bro. They're dogs. We are really dealing. We are really looking at, and that's Coach Zay. That's why I wanted you to see. Like, if you really go back and watch it, the old line looks like they're dominating in some of those clips. Like, bro, and and mm -hmm. but you go back and you look, you're like, dang, D line is in the backfield, and you know because they in black jerseys, they can't. They gotta let up. But I'm telling you. Talking to Tim Keen and Tim Smith and John Latham last night, our D line, Isaiah Fager, Isaiah Fager had a, 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 a solid tackle for loss against Jan Miller. So that tells you the type of rotation we have in the D line. Jan Miller is first team back. Isaiah Fager had a tackle for loss against uh, a Jan Miller. So that's, I remember that I was talking about how deep we're going to rotate on the defensive side. I can't wait to see this continue to unfold, man. We, bro, college football is about to be doggone put on notice. Anybody that thought Alabama was had dropped off, they're going to be sadly mistaken. Sadly mistaken. Let's go back. We had some super chats too, y'all. My fault. I, I almost forgot. Uh, Patriot, like uh, Adam came through. He said Proctor is a teenager and he made mistakes. He deserves a second chance if he earns it. After all, some of you praise Miro like he walks on water. Yet you are so quick to <laughs> criticize Proctor. Pro remember the Michigan game. Listen, time out. Adam, I'm ready to get at your neck tonight, boy. Can I have it for like a minute, chat? Uh, fellas, can I have it for one Put minute? Put your mask on, coach. Put it I on. Don't need, I don't even need no mask because I want to know when I, I – when... I agree with the first half, but I, Adam, I don't know how Milrow relates to Proctor. Exactly. That's, that's where I, I, I don't agree with you. Exactly. And tonight, the elephant in the room, when we have the elephant in the room, just expect like car hold, like – cold hard facts like we we not we not doing none of this back and forth adam you have been on this channel and other channels this discredit discrediting milro for months now and the fact that coaches who are qualified to evaluate this young man they continuously come out and give him positive praise and you turn around and give him negative outlook of talking about what he did in the past what he's not doing the fact that he's actually doing what you're not giving him credit for lets me know that you are not a believer. And when you come around, when we win this national championship, when we win the SEC this year, when you come around trying to celebrate, I'm going to pull your fan card and I'm going to hand it back to you with some 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 of the inches cut off of it because you won't believe in the fact of development. Let's go back to Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts sat there and took the back seat to Tua for a whole season. And when it was time for him to show up in the game, what did he do to get us back in that game or, or to extend the lead in that game? He threw a pass touchdown and he, he sealed it with his legs. Jalen Murrow is in an offensive system that it, it, it adheres to what he does best. They are adjusting their scheme to fit what Murrow does because they see the type of talent that they can develop if they can get him comfortable. Tom Maurice never allowed Jalen Murrow to get comfortable. And in the meat of the season last year, Jalen Miro had the highest completion percentage in college football for four weeks straight against five of uh, four defenses that were ranked in the top 25. So the moment you start talking crazy that talking about Miro can't develop, he may have peaked last year. 
And the offensive play calling didn't fit what he needed to do to win games. But guess what? That boy has improved. And when he shows up and shows out, I hope, I hope you come here with your head down, bowed solemnly and humbly saying, forgive me for doubting Milro. I'm going to close it on that. Anybody else want some? Because I, I, I'm i done cooking with, with Adam. I'm done cooking with Adam. Yeah. I, and I, Adam, I, I appreciate him. Adam, no, we, we debate very well. Oh, it's well. all love. It's all yeah. love. It's yeah. all love. This is this is this is Bama fans being Bama fans, right? Listen, we cultivate an experience over here. The reason my channel is named Around the Table Sports, it's the same theory we're cultivating over here. What we want to do <clears throat> is make this feel like how many of us, whenever we have our Sunday off, hang out with the with our friends and talk sports. And these are the yeah. conversations. This is how they go. So that that's what we're after. It's all love. Yeah. And he and, knows. Yeah. I think Adam yeah, knows. No, that. Adam, Adam knows. Adam I'm not great. Adam, I, so Adam's cool. Yeah, like, he's right here. So it's okay to disagree. Love you. Yeah, Adam, yeah, Adam, yeah. Adam, 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 Adam's Adam. about it. But you know, what I will I, say, I agree with you about Proctor, right? I but I just Milro never Milro to me, the reason why I don't see that connection is because even though I'm cool with Proctor coming back, Proctor looked elsewhere. When every everything was in turmoil, whenever there were nothing but questions, Jalen Milro walked into Mal Moore opened the door and then he made a choice he looked and said i'm not going anywhere roll tide he made his choice right then and there that it didn't matter what happened he was like it right now this team needs leaders right now this university needs leaders they need direction and i'm going to do anything i can to give them direction not detract from direction so that's where i'm, I'm i don't understand like the, the connection between proctor and Milro, uh, that's that's where I disagree. All right, time out. This is a hey, Van, uh, Van Gogh. You already know. I wanted to highlight this after the Ole Miss game when Tommy Reese said it. He said it. He said, "I just let him play football." We came on this show for the post game show. Jay and Sean, y'all remember that was the yeah. thing that we harked on. Reese letting Milro play football is the best offense we can do right now. Did we not say that? Did we not say that, Coach Jay? I know you ready to go. You got the mask on. What you? What? What? I know we got another super chat. You want to? You want to hit on Adam, or you want? You want to go to another one? It's up on you. It's. it's, it's I, 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 I hit on Adam real quick. Like I said, bro, it's all. It's all. It's all love, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm. I'm, I'm trying to save my mask for April 17th. I'm just giving you guys a sneak peek because April 17th, I won't be drunk. <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be like that. I, you know, you know, we got younger kids watching. No, but say, <laughs> why are you laughing, Coach Blue? Cause you ain't got no home training sometimes. I, I, I like I like to see this no home training side of Jay sometimes. I love to see that. No, nah, but no, nah, it, it's listen, Jalen Miro. We all, listen at, at this point. People that don't like Jalen Miro, as far as being the quarterback, I'm not saying it's a person because I think a lot of people like him, but people don't like him being the quarterback. Uh, excuse my language, but tough shit. I mean, the, the, he's starting. The dude's gonna start. We, we've already had uh, coordinators, offensive analysts. We've had Jamarcus Shepard. We've had Kalen DeBoer. Every, this break, like he's gone through two coaching staffs, and all of them has elected him to be the guy. He's already won his starting job going into fall camp, and that's not because of the loyalty factor. Because Kalen DeBoer doesn't know Jalen Murrow. None of these guys know Jalen Moore at a high level besides Robert Gillespie. He came there. He got reps. He won the job. Ty Simpson, <laughs> a lot of these guys had opportunities. At the end of the day, Jalen Murrow was the more prepared quarterback. He was more prepared, and he executed it on the football field. So Jalen Murrow is the guy, guys. Like it or not, he is the guy there. And like I said, guys, people people, people say the same crap about Jaden Daniels uh, at, at uh, LSU. Ty, who's that five-star quarterback they had who transferred because Jaden Daniels won that job? Oh, jeez. Nuss, well, they still have, they, uh, well, Nuss is Nuss. still there. He, he's yeah, still there, but he ended up losing a job fair and square. Like you, yeah, he was a five star, and they, and everyone thought that he was going to be the guy uh, because you know Jaden Daniels is a running back, can't throw the football, isn't accurate, struggling with trust interview. The same criticism that he got that Jalen Murrow had, he cleaned it up in a year, and he ended up winning the Heisman Trophy. Why? Not even a year, six months, Jay. In six months. Six months. The offense. They fixed his quarterback tendencies. He became a much more complete quarterback. <laughs> was the most improved player in the country while also adding on to his rushing skill set. This is this is why I always talk about Jalen Murrow has the highest upside out of any player in the country because what you saw from Jaden Daniels is exactly what you can see from Jalen Murrow if you, if you give him the right weapons, you put him in the right offensive system with the right coaching staff that can coach him up. 
And that was kind of the thing about Ty Maurice. Ty Maurice brought in an offense that was meant for Drew, that was that was not meant for him. It was meant from the other guy that came in for Notre Dame to take to come in here and take the job in the first place. And he you know, had and then he <laughs> that noodle alarm. Lord have mercy. Well, let's not talk right. about that. It, it just so happens that we were trying to play football, not lacrosse. Right. I mean, exactly. two years, you, you can make a legit <laughs> argument for two years. Jalen Murrow has not Facts been a time. system that's fixed his skill set. This is the offense that does. And if you don't believe me, Michael Penix just ran a four freaking five at the 40 yard at the at, at the 40 yard dash. At his pro day, and he wasn't even 100 percent healthy for two years because he's th- been dealing with injuries four years. I thought he just ran a four four. I, I thought think he's- the official was a four five unofficial. Yeah, that, that was the official. That, that was kind of the oh, official. the official was a four five. I yeah. think I, I've seen oh. so many different things. Not I, I un- do know it was fast as hell. Yeah, not nah, Jay. He wasn't nah, even Jay. healthy. He just got healthy during the off season. My boy, I have a, I have a NFL. You know, my NFL scout. We talked right. about this. You know, he he said that was a four a uh, four four three and. and when you look at Jaden Daniels move against us in that LSU Bama game, I can believe it. I thought because he, it, it he, like he, he that burst that I mean mean? that I mean, and it's not even the, the jump out burst, it's the burst at the 20 to 40 range. Mm-hmm. Like it's like he gets the 20, like oh you know what I'm saying? Like he kicks it up. So close turn. Where you want to go? You want to have you want to talk to Adam? Or let's hit, let's hit one? this. Uh, oh, come on, Adam. Come on. No, Adam, it is a fair comparison, brother. It, it's a let, fair comparison. It is a fair let, comparison. Let me address, let me address okay. Adam real quick. You know, Adam, Thank my you. partner, I love him to death. Mm-hmm. Get him, Sean. Get him. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this. No, it, it's not even that. It's say, you know, I, I, you know, Adam has the right to, to, to criticize Jalen because Jalen didn't play well a lot. He, he didn't. didn't against the big teams. Right. He didn't. Of course, right. He but here's the thing: when you look at the Texas game, the Michigan game, the Georgia game, Jalen didn't do, didn't do very well. But this is what I'm trying to tell you guys: Jalen Miro was sixth in the Heisman race. He was the youngest starting quarterback in the SEC. He had the less experience of any starter to start for a Power Five team in our conference. Right. So you talking about a puppy, a baby? You know what I'm saying? Compared to these guys. Like Jaden Daniels, who started at two different schools. Um, when you're talking about Jalen Miro, we understand the flaws he had. We understand that. We've talked about that in 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 great detail. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, though, Adam, and I feel you, Adam. I do feel you. The frustration still lingers for certain plays. When you look at that Michigan game, I seen you tweeting about the. I mean, um, commenting about the Michigan game. The Michigan game, the play calling was kind of bad. You know what I mean for what what Michigan was doing to us on defense. You said we Kyle. played right. Into, we played right into their hands offensively. Sean, 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 Sean hold up, time out. I'm gonna call the time out. I could, I, we got three timeouts. This is my second. One. You don't have to hold back. Kind of p- play calling in that Mitch game. We ain't got to say kind of. Give it to yeah, him. That shit was bad. Oh, no. it, 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 it was. No, I mean, I, you know, you know what, Smoke? You already know where I'm going. I ain't. Yeah. Gotta, you you know, the play, Adam, the play call. If if you could see the things me, Coach Jay, Ty, and Smoke see. The play calling was terrible. I don't give a damn. You got Michael Vick back there. That play calling, we did what Michigan practiced to stop us from doing. All we did was play right into their hands, right? That play scheme that we ran against Michigan was going to get us beat. We did well to score when we did score, right? So I think we're not giving Jalen Miro enough credit, man. We're not giving him enough credit because he's a young quarterback. He's a leader of the team. He's back for another year. I said this this morning, guys. Go back and look. Just like what Coach Jay just said. Go back and look at Jaden Daniels at LSU last year when they beat us. The year they beat us. He didn't have a great year, right? He ran around the field. Most of his big plays were running plays. They beat us on his league. That was literally right? neck and neck similar. Fact, similar. Neck and neck similar. Neck and neck similar. Right? Well, Jaden Milrose coming back for another year just like Jaden Daniels did last year. All I ask Adam is I respect your criticism. I do. Just hold a jury until this season. That's all yes. I ask you to do. This is his first. He started. This is his first year started. Yep. This guy went into all right before this season. Let's look at what he got thrown into against Arkansas and Texas AM last year with a coordinator who didn't even believe he could be a quarterback. With no and first team reps. With no with first, no team, first reps. team reps that, that week going into that game. Bryce Young was still practicing injured, taking first team reps. This is the Friday walkthroughs that Jalen Miro gets the nod that you're going to be the starter. 
What do you expect from this young man? He hasn't even thrown to the guys who were coming out as the first team guys. And he goes out there. He wins us the game at Texas A&M. Right? Under Bill O'Brien, who is, to me, mediocre. I mean, for all my 420 folks out there, y'all ever got that 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 sack that you knew was the like the, the worst? And the only reason you ain't tripped because you knew you just need to get there? Yeah, that's what Bill O'Brien was for Jalen Miro. And so – when I'm talking about schematics and things of that nature, this system fits Miro. Kalen DeBoer said something at the uh, at the uh, press conference, at the presser, after the scrimmage, that gave me confidence that all of my speculations about what Jalen Miro is doing and how he's going to progress is, is really happening. He said consistency. Jalen Miro had zero turnovers. Ty Simpson had zero turnovers. Dylan Lonergan, I mean, Austin Mack, number three. I just want y'all to note that Austin Mack is number three. So he's learning. He's growing. He had no turnovers. Dylan Lonergan had no turnovers. And mind you, Austin Mack and Dylan Lonergan, I think they had, I think they split like 18 reps, 18 reps or something like that. So they didn't really have a, a lot of opportunities to, to display anything. But Ty Simpson, I think Ty Simpson is bought into this one year thing and letting Jay, Jay you know, supporting his brother. And that, Y'all saw the clip, man. Jalen Miro is legit. He is he is going to support everybody on that team, whether he's the guy taking the snaps or not. Jalen Miro is a true leader. But to Let get back, to- oh my bad, go, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, real quick, real, real fast. Adam, I will give you this, Adam. Georgia, Texas, and Michigan all t- took away, tried to take away his deep ball. Right? They spied him to death, and they wanted him to to play within the, the the mid range to line of scrimmage. They figured they would, you know, we'll give him what he get on the ground. Let's just not let him beat us over the top. They all played him like that. And we, we lost one game. We actually we lost two games and, and just destroyed Georgia. So I'll give you that. But to coach Mook's point, he's coming back this year, right? Judge him on this year, Adam, because this year with this scheme, you won't be able to play him like that and stop him. If you play him like that, you're, you're going dead. To have 300 to have. Yeah. You're dead. Yeah. You're dead. Yeah. I mean, because this is a coaching staff that understands. We know that everybody's scared of his legs. We know that he has arm talent, deep ball arm talent. So they're going to play safe. They're going to double spy. Do that on this. Y'all. Yeah. The quick screen game, the jet sweep pass, the touch pass. He's going to have 500 yards off of that alone by the end of the season. Just that jet, that that touch pass that we Jalen Hurts got so much credit for, Bryce. I mean, not Bryce Young, but Tua got so much credit for. A lot of people they talk about Tua and his timing, this timing uh based offense. Tua in the first quarter, guess how many touch passes on the jet sweep he had in the first quarter? It was an average of 10. 10 of those plays for Tua in the first quarter. Like I, I really started going back and looking at all these crazy breakdown stats that people were talking about. Tua would do that jet sweet touch pass 10 times in the first quarter. We didn't get that twice in a game from Jalen Miro last year. So imagine if we would have, and we would have allowed him to progress in a system like that, man. Guys, Ty, I'm going to throw it back to you because I see you over there. You scrolling. I know you coming up on some stuff. What what are you what are you thinking about? Because this, this Jalen Miro situation, we, we have to really give the people something to really lean on. Because spring ball is only going to do so much that I don't care if Jalen Merrill come in and, and throw 800 yards in the spring game and, and six touchdowns, people still going to doubt him because they're going to say it's the spring game. Yeah, listen, I just I, I think Coach Sean hit the nail on the head. We're, we'll see this year. But here's what I will say. We haven't had a quarterback developer on staff since A.J. Billy and Sark. Yep. Um, And. Yep. Highlight now, that. Really, really go into that for them, Ty. Yeah, because I, mean, I don't listen, think they understand the, the way the staff changed up after Tua. Well, yeah, and no doubt about it, right? And especially really after Mac, right? I mean, you, 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 at least when Mac was there, you still had Sark, you still had Milwee, you still had, I forget who the other guy was, but you, you had three different cats in that room that, like, hey, if we need to work with the quarterback, we can work with the quarterback, and it's, it's all gravy. Smook, you said earlier uh, you didn't like Bill O'Brien's offense. Well, l- let me take the I loathed Bill O'Brien's offense. And I understand every time I bring this up, people say, yes, but we averaged X amount of points a game in spite of Bill O'Brien, not because of Bill O'Brien. 
when you're when you have a quarterback like Bryce Young and your offense is at its best when the play that was called fundamentally breaks down <laughs> and now you have to have your quarterback freestyle and that's when your offense is most successful that's not a good thing that's bad and that was Bill O'Brien's offense it was oh i'm going to call four comeback routes um by the way, guys, we're going to implement route modification trees. Uh, be, all be comebacks. We're going to do no creative route layering concepts. We're not going to make safeties choose off of high-low concepts, which, by the way, that's what Steve Sarkeesian killed us with. He killed us with high-low options. He gave Quinn Ewers a choice. Okay, if Caleb Downs steps forward, go over top. If go he goes top. back, Simple. go forward. Like, Simple we and effective. Simple we and effective. That. We didn't at all. Uh, Coach and, Son, yes, I don't mean to cut you off. Coach Son, he, like what you're saying right now, Coach Son came literally after that Texas game because that was our first post game presser. Y'all remember that? Our first post game coaching show. Well, may may I say one more well. thing? Go ahead, brother. Because I, I understand. Adam, I understand the confusion here. I'm um, saying, yes, Batai, you can't rely on you, You're 100% right. I'm not relying on stats, though. I'm relying on film. Like, because I, I, you notice I didn't say one stat. I didn't say where where our offense was. No stats, just watching film. That that Bill O'Brien offense was terrible. Just terrible in terms of its consistency. How are we scoring 40 points one week and then we can't drop 10 on Auburn the next? Because it's so inconsistent. And when I watched the film for Jalen Milrow, listen, I do agree with you, Adam. I'm not saying he was perfect this last year, right? Michigan, there were some misses, of course. But the dude's yeah. also shell-shocked. He's been sacked more than anybody in the nation because our offensive line is Thanks. not able to consistently give him any sort of help. Our offensive coordinator is implementing no pre-snap motion. We have no orbit motion. We have no creativity. All these little things that can help a quarterback identify, am I in man? Am I in zone? We didn't have any of that. And so I, I completely understand where you're coming from, Adam, but I, I'm looking at this more from a, from a film perspective than anything. No, I, just, I do think things are, you know, well, just Bryce young, man, being Peyton Manning out there. Yeah. Trying to set it, setting up the protections, setting up the route concepts, making all the adjustments, just him with just, just pretty much him with his quarterback cadence, just, Pretty much Bill O'Brien saying, here you go, Bryce Young. Here's our here's our offense. You make it work. I'm not going to make any sort of adjustments that, for you. That doesn't it's, work it's anywhere. That doesn't work anywhere in college football. Because you don't, even even that year with Bryce Young started, how many Bryce Youngs did we have that year? That I mean, like, how many did we have? Just Bryce year? and Blaze. <laughs> Blaze. Blaze is the OG, the, the GOAT freaking playmaker. But mm – -hmm. I'm I'm being realistic, y'all. In that year that Bryce Young had his first year as a starter, right? How many QBs in the in the country were going out setting protections? How many wide receiver groups were going out reading coverages perfectly in a read based like a, a read concept based pass scheme, right? And that's that's what screwed us. It wasn't just X read. On his plate, it was all three wide receivers and the tight end in the pass scales making reads. That's why we saw the play where Christian Leary and uh, uh, Mechie almost ran into each other against Georgia. Y'all remember Mechie made an athletic play against Georgia, and we were so oh my god, Mechie. Well, if you look at that play, Christian Leary almost messed that play up because what he read, which was the right read, it was to beat his man deep, so he ran the deep route. But because Mechie inside route, he had beat his 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 guy up front. I mean, first first phase, he extended his the second phase, third phase concept. And they both made the right read, but it ended up showing putting a, the two defenders in the same position to make a play. And Mechie just made a better play. It wasn't nothing special about the play call. It was you saw the confusion amongst the receivers. And that SEC championship game, that's when I really started realizing, like, it's not these players. It's the play calling. It's the it's the concepts we're applying. And that's why Javon Baker left, who's about to be a second round pick. We had such a talent in Javon Baker, man, and yeah. we just let, just let him walk out the door. And even that's why yeah. we, you know, that's what, the kid that uh, that went to St. Francis, that went to uh, that went to Oregon, 
you know, that we, kid's we, routes look like Amari Cooper's routes, and we didn't yeah. even use him. Yeah, we, we use him. even but, like, not, not over not only him, Treshawn Holden is at Oregon yeah. going freaking crazy. Yeah, balls to walls. Ain't no way we how do you tell? And yeah, he dropped a few. He dropped a few, but guess what? When I go back and look at Treshawn Holden's six drops in his career at Alabama, guess what? Four of them were thrown behind him. Two of them were contested. Easy. I mean, you can just go watch the plays. Yes, you want. They touch your hands. We we, we throw this thing. I'm a wide receiver. Ball touch my hands. I'm trying to catch it. But guess what? If I got a helmet in my chest when the ball touch my hands, reality, anatomy, physics sets in place. Some things you just can't deny. Like, at that point, you you just you just become lost in the offense. You you don't have any confidence that the coordinator is trying to set you up for success. He goes to Oregon, and Treshawn Holden is probably going to be a first round pick next year when he gets out of there. He's going to be a first round pick because he's going to a scheme that fits his skill set. They're not putting him in situations where he got to beat somebody over top. They get him in on it on the hitches, the comebacks, the digs, the quick the the, the slant reads like. Come on, man. This is this this defense, this this new scheme is going to allow Jalen Murrow to become the elite quarterback that everybody thought he was between week. What that was? What was the meet our schedule? The Kentucky game to about before the uh before the Auburn game, right? Yeah, late season. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like late season. 71.4% completion rate during those four games, zero turnovers, 14 touchdowns. You get what I'm saying? You don't get those numbers from everybody during the meat of their schedule. Against LSU, paid the best game of the year? Come on, man. Kyle just confirmed uh, for the chat that people was asking. Remember I told you earlier that my partners that were there told me that they didn't see the kid. Kyle just texted that yeah. he he confirmed that he was not there. Talking about Brelsford? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's jump to he that. Was I mean, let I me think- let- let me go say ahead, this real quick before we go to Bur- Bur- uh, Brailsford, real fast, because this morning Ed OG813 was talking about Quinn Ewers. Let me say this. Quinn Ewers threw the ball 394 times. It's almost 400 times. Hear me. He had 22 touchdowns and six interceptions. Hmm. Jalen Miro threw the ball 100 less times, 284. Actually, that's more than 100, right? And he had 23 touchdowns and six interceptions. Y'all better get your mind right. Hey, Steven, shout out to Steven for keeping up with the timeouts. I've had used all of my timeouts, so I won't be interjecting on anybody else's statements. Steven, I really appreciate you. You really holding me down. It's the elephant in the room. This is what I need. I need accountability. I just told my brothers in it. The, in the, didn't I tell y'all in the private mm-hmm. chat? I said, if I get long with it, make sure y'all let me know. Because I, 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 I love these type of segments, y'all. I love interacting yeah. with the chat. And, and Me too. Yeah, I mean it's just what it is. But Steven, appreciate you. I had no more timeouts. I'm gonna play by the rules. Where are we going next, fellas? Hear me out on that though. The chat, you know, I know the guys hear me out, but hear me out on that. Uh, Adam, you my brother. Jalen Miro threw the ball a hundred less times and had the same amount of t- actually had one more touchdown than my man and the same amount of interceptions. Think about that. He threw for 2,800 yards. Dude threw for 3,400 yards. So Jalen Miro, if you give him that that volume. Listen, and he set out a whole game. It's a fact. A whole game against a USF team who gave up more rushing yards than passing, right? We didn't get to test him because of the monsoon that was happening. But you you're trying to tell me that. Jalen Miro, who had started building some cohesiveness, he had Jalen Miro didn't lose us the Texas game, guys. Jalen Miro had 14 points taken off the game, and we lost taken off the board, and we lost by 10. Penalties. We lost by 10, and he had 14 points. Fact. Not even 14. Let's say he had 12 points taken off the board. 12. We win, we lose by 10. He has two touchdowns taken off the board. Let's be real, y'all. That's a fact. Adam, about that, Coach? Adam, 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 he said he said he threw less because he ran too soon. No, I think he didn't run enough. He didn't run enough. Attempts? A hundred? That's that's, <laughs> that's not on Jalen. That's the that's the that's the coordinator. That's that's listen. A hundred. I wish we had a breakdown of play calling. That's what I would like to see. If we had somebody in the in the in the undefeated that could pull us play calling stats, not necessarily 
numbers, just what they did. But play calling, what was the design play call? I think that'll give us a better picture. Mm -hmm. and, and, and explain to me this. If that's the case, let's just say my partner Adam is right. Right. How do you get 22 touchdowns to 23 touchdowns? How do you get the same amount of interceptions? Think I'll, about this. I'll also say this. Quinn was one of the Quinn was not a great deep throw of the ball. Xavier exactly. Worthy is about to go. I mean, yeah, Ty, Ty, Ty would tell you. Like Xavier Worthy might go in the first round. I can he just ran a four two one. And yeah. Quinn, I can't tell you. I, I you would have never even thought that Xavier Worthy was not a good tracker of the ball simply because of the amount of overthrows just the disconnection that happened between him and word then i'm like what either quit you has the strongest arm ever or this dude simply is inaccurate and when you yeah. go back and you watch that texas game with, that alabama played a lot of the uh, a lot of the throws that he threw deep down the field he floated them up in the air he, he and he did it purposely so that the receivers can so so, the, so, that, so that the receivers can have more time as far as getting under the ball because he wanted that hang time he purposely wanted that hang time to try to, 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 to try to be as high as possible for those receivers to get underneath and make sure that those – make mm -hmm. sure that they can't screw it up. But literally after that game, I did not see any of those sort of throws that Quinn Ewers made against Alabama. And I'm just – I'm not talking about the completion. I'm talking about the, the hang time throws. I never saw that for the entirety yeah. of the season. And I saw this against multiple games where he struggled to hit receivers in stride going deep down the field and I don't know if that's just because of it. I, I just believe it's an accuracy issue. I, I don't think that Quinn Ewers is as good as everyone kind of talks about. I think that he's one of those quarterbacks that I think he needs to be in structure in order for that dude to, to really put, to fully utilize him. I think if you put him in a yeah. time to him, I think he would probably struggle as well. Um, and again, it's no, it's not that much of a slide on Quinn Ewers because, like I said, I, I wish Steve Sarkeesian was here too. If Jalen Mayro had Steve Sarkeesian, I, my goodness gracious. I mean, I, Jalen, I mean, I think it's, I think it would be Candyland simply because of the type of quarterback that you can run in this offense. But Quinn Ewers, I mean, just because Quinn, they, that just because they won that game and Quinn Ewers had a great game, I'm telling you, it does not mean that we need to measure Jalen Miro just like, like right. Quinn Ewers. Because let me tell you something, guys. This quarterback, this, at least for returning starters, there's a lot of quarterbacks I simply do not like. I don't like. And I think Jalen Miro has a big opportunity. It has a big opportunity to get that number one overall spot. He has a great opportunity to do it. Great opportunity. I look at the quarterbacks that have to play in structure, and there's not a lot of great quarterbacks that I can see it from. DG Uyunglele, I think, has that potential because, you know, you know, because of the arm talent and obviously the size. But that dude is he's inaccurate. We talk about Jalen Miro struggling with the short intermediate throws. That dude truly does. I mean, he is the epitome of inconsistency when it comes to talking about the short to intermediate right uh short to intermediate tree the dude sucks and he struggles on the second to third level type throws as well right i mean and, and he's projected to be in the third quarterback taken in uh in the draft next year potentially right the only other quarterback that i like a little bit is shador sanders and i think even shador kind of has his faults a little bit so guys we can't really use, i mean look at ohio state ohio state is struggling right now Right, Will Howard came in, big body type of quarterback, struggling. They're struggling so far in their scrimmages. Uh, Julian saying so far, not not doing that well, guys. And that's a that's a hell of a quarterback talent. But that guy is has is struggling with accuracy issues. Not that he's not not the grasp of the offense or the timing of base of the offense. He's struggling to hit dudes in stride too, and he's struggling with the short intermediate stuff. So he's struggling with accuracy. Every quarterback from what I've seen so far that's either transferred. Or has returned back, they're not doing that well. So this is not so, guys. We don't really have a Jalen Miro issue. This is kind of more. This is really more of a thing where I think everyone, whether they're working in new personnel, brand new coaching staffs, they're they're all everyone's going to have their struggles. But like I said, guys, I don't think based off what we seen last year, the quarterbacks that have returned, they're nothing special. And so for Jalen Miro to, re to return back, a former Heisman Trophy candidate, a guy that does again, we we recognize his faults. We all we all recognize his faults. The coaches, including Ty, we have talked about it for the entirety of the year. But this is going into a new season. We have a brand new offensive scheme, which is proven to be quarterback friendly. We have a coaching staff, which is proven to be quarterback friendly. Look at the quarterbacks that they have developed. Oh, athletes that they develop. And uh, like I said, just be patient. And I think we'll be fine. Well, here's, right. let, let me, let me get Ty. But before before y'all go, 
this is a statement that I not just and Adam, I don't believe this is Adam's take. Like, I don't believe this is this is just Adam. I don't think this is Adam at all. I think Adam comes with facts with his concerns about Jalen Miro based off what we all have evaluated, right? I just think there are other people, a majority of the fan base falls in line with this statement here. The fact that Jalen Miro was able to go through 12 game season, right? Regular season and get us to the playoffs against the type of competition that we went against and get us to the playoffs to say that he can't continue to improve where he actually has time to work on his craft. That is beyond me. That's where I'm stuck at. But that's all I want to say. This, this statement here kind of just sums it up for me. He says, Adam, I'll give you that. He held the ball too long and ran around, but still took us to the playoff. So there's objectivity and there's hating. It's a thin line, but your 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 tips on it. A lot of people that don't have facts like Adam, they're the ones that's tips on. I won't say Adam is. Adam has valid points. I think Adam's points of why he doesn't have that confidence in Miro are valid. But there's a lot of people who can't even establish those points, and they're just talking about what he can't do, not what he can possibly do. You get what I'm saying? That's where that's where I want to draw the line. Let Go me ahead. get Ty's take on this real quick. I want to hear Go what ahead. Ty say about this. We were talking about Quinn Ewers, Ty, and I was telling everybody Quinn threw the ball over 100 more times, and Jalen had more touchdowns and the same amount of interceptions. What do you think about that in correlation with this comment? Well, one, um, I do agree in terms with Adam. I, I talk a lot about the offensive line. There are, uh, and I don't know how many sacks, so I'm not going to, but there are a, a number of sacks that were too many that were on Milrow. And there, yeah. on that, we agree. Too yeah. many of them were on Milrow, though I, I, I must admit, having said that, way too many were just on an offensive lineman getting absolutely packed up and smoked, yeah. right? Like just, but, but, you, but you're not wrong. I, that On that, we very much will agree. Um no doubt about that. But in terms of Quinn, this is what I've always said with Quinn. I, I got to cover Quinn in high school. Like yeah. I'm very, very familiar with his game, all of that. And Quinn, I'm always just wanting him to be consistent. Because if Quinn is consistent, he's going to be a force in the NFL wherever he is. When, when we see Quinn play with the consistency, it's there. But yeah. My thing with Quinn is, Coach, we, we look at these numbers right here, right? He had 100 less attempts. He had more touchdowns, as many interceptions. He did that while not being a perfect one-rated quarterback and without having Steve Sarkeesian and company calling the offense for him. Right. Quinn is one of those guys where if he ever gets it year, like if he ever gets it together, man, he's going to be dangerous. But – Coach Jay, you said it best. The best two games I've ever seen Quinn play were against Bama. And I'm not saying I've seen him just look awful, but I haven't seen him look like the giant slayer that we know he can be consistently. Um, and because of that, it's it's just a super interesting conversation when you talk about Quinn Ewers. Listen. So, so yeah, and I, I coincide with both of y'all points with Queen Ewers. I, I think he's he's hit a wall to a certain uh to a certain degree, but at the same time, that dude, if he ever figures it out, he will be the number one QB in that draft class. You get what I'm saying? Like he will end up being Queen Ewers has he's not the strongest arm, but his decisiveness, his IQ to the game is different when he has the right things around him. Let me let right. this. Lies. JM was outplayed by time Max Saturday, but bad Lies. outplay. Lies, Seth. You're this is this got to be John Smith from Twitter. This has got to be John Smith from Twitter. And I'm gonna tell you, I've been waiting for you to show up. Finally, you came out of the dark. You came out of hiding. Now you get to get cooked live. So let's talk about the facts. Charlie Porter, Charlie Porter of of uh, Bama Online has reported the stats, the major stats of the game. There was a comment made by real this new guy, Real Talk Bama. He going crazy right now. He he he's one. I think I'm going to hire him as my like my pit bull, my personal pit bull. But Charlie Potter even confirmed that all the passing touchdowns that you've seen in the clips were called back because of penalties. And one was thrown by Ty. One was thrown by doggone Austin Mack. Right. 
Jalen Murrow didn't have any turnovers, but his passing efficiency was consistent, just like the coaching staff said. And then the another thing that, that I want to highlight is the fact that they highlight the fact that Jalen Murrow was not indecisive during the scrimmage. When it was time for him to break out of the pocket, guess what he did? Because guess what his coach should do now with a quarterback coach? He's coached, hey, if it's not there, use your legs. You're the fastest. You're the best athlete on the field. Nine times out of ten, you're the best athlete on the field. How many times did we come to the chat post-game conference and say Jalen should have took off then? Jalen should have took off there. How many times do you think Tommy Reese was like, hey, go through your reads? How many times do you think, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, there's a different vibe around this young man. The facts are in the details. Uh, Mr. Seth Justice, I can I can tell you right now, there are multiple media members that will come in here and tell you to shut the hell up because you're going off of some crazy freaking Milro hate binge. And it's sad, man. The fact that you will not get behind this young man and push the fact that he can get better. We saw Jalen Hurts take a year of a beat down. Like, literally, we got to a national championship with Jalen Milrow playing half of the field. Coach Jay, am I lying? We we watched we watched Jalen Hurts play half the field for a whole season because of an offensive coordinator who understood what skill set he was working with. Jalen Merrill, how many times? How many rush attempts did Jalen Merrill had 10, 10 less rush attempts than our our RB one? His his first year starting, and we saw where it got us. We saw how limited we got when we played the powers to be. Right? We saw how it came back to bite us. So I would like to cook justice real quick, y'all. I, I have I have Seth Justice on the menu. We got raw Seth Justice. I want to put him on the grill and and let's let's go ahead and cook him. Um, can I ask? Work. Can I ask Seth a question? Ask him. You know how you do it. Let's do it. You set it up perfect, bro. Seth, I'd like to ask you something, bro. If you don't mind, I, I mean, this is a legitimate question. You gave me Jalen Miro stats against Michigan with the defense that Michigan was playing with the front seven and our front five getting whipped the way they were, playing that shell the way they were, running the stunts that they were running, doing the same thing, you're telling me Ty Simpson or Dylan Lonergan at that time would have did better against that defense? Yes or no? That's all I want to know. If you tell me yes, you know, I, first of all, before you even answer that question, Seth, can you tell me what Michigan was playing against Jay? If you can tell me this, I respect you. Can you please tell me what defense Michigan was playing to stop Jalen Hurt, to stop Jalen Milrow? That's the first question. And second, do you think our second quarterbacks and third quarterbacks would have done better? What defense was Michigan playing? And would they have done better with the second string defense? That's what I want you to ask. Don't Google nothing. I want you to answer the question right now. What defense is Michigan playing to stop Jalen Milrow? And do you, you got, think our second quarterbacks would have done better? You got if 28 you seconds that, from that, then I'm from that you moment. What you're talking about. He got if 28 not, seconds because that's the delay that we have it set on for this stream yard settings. Mm -hmm. We got 28 second delay. So he not getting a live reaction. So give him 28 seconds. And then if we don't see a, a comment within the next, what's this, 158.12? So if we don't see a comment by 159.30 uh, on this live stream, we know he Googling. But uh, that'll tell me he knows what he's talking Seth, about. Seth, Seth, one more question for you, brother. One more question. Mm -hmm. Name me oh. one great quarterback that played well against that Michigan defense this season. I'll wait. Oh, that's what exactly, Coach Jay. That's you got Coach Jay cooking. We got Coach Jay on the grill. Oh, snap. I'll, you know. listen, I'll wait. Name me, name me one quarterback that played well against that Michigan defense. I'll wait. Hands folded. I'm waiting, I'm waiting him to tell me what defense the Michigan number play. one rated quarterback in the nation struggled against this same defense. Against the nothing. same defense, he's I not going to say nothing. nothing. He's going to say something about the scrimmage. These made up stats that he got from the scrimmage. This still dude, see nothing. this dude is claiming to have insider scoop, right? And nothing he said on any of my tweets lines up with any of of the of the inside scoop, mind you. Coach Sean, did you hear anything about the quarterbacks going crazy this this past scrimmage? I heard they all play well. What okay. you mean? Do do you did like, you hear anything about? anybody outshining anybody else mm -mm, no I okay didn't. but one thing that i heard you say was this running game was crazy richard young yeah. went crazy yeah i heard that too coach jay yeah. what did you text me earlier coach day about richard young mm -hmm. uh, and me and me and ty were talking about hopefully we can get richard young to buy into the process because he can be the next josh jacobs right when we talking about that earlier ty so if 
I, I, Seth ain't saying nothing. Seth gonna run out of here and go to Twitter Are and you tweet. answer him. No. Where you do you know why? Do you, do you, you know why I asked him that? Do you know why I asked him that? I wanted to know was you a real football guy or are you just hating on Miro? You know he is, man. And I got I'm telling you, I got a pit bull on Twitter. I love his energy because he could say the stuff that I can't say. He can say he can say what the real issue is, and we're not going to address it on this channel, but y'all can go to Twitter and get active on that. Seth, one thing about it is Miro has the every everything you want is attribute wise in a quarterback and that if you're a quarterback whisperer i guarantee you if ryan day or uh lincoln riley had Miro, the message the, the the national narrative would be different because these are offensive coordinators who understand how to develop talent and use skill sets right and maximize skill sets jalen hurts went to oklahoma they didn't make him a drop back passer Look at Jalen Hurts highlights from Oklahoma. Ty, Jay, I know y'all y'all been kind of chill on this. I, I'm I'm gonna just sit back and I'm I'm gonna just chill for a second because this Seth guy, he I mean he been he been at me for like two days now, literally. He can't he came to my tweet and put seven tweets back to back in a matter of thirty seconds, trying to tell Ty, me that Jay, Miro. Let me let me bring it to you guys really fast. Twenty seconds, not even twenty seconds. Really quickly, no disrespect to you, Seth. You know, you a hey, shout out to you, brother. But I asked that because the whole purpose of that is you could have put Ty Hayes back. I mean, not Ty Hayes, excuse me, Ty Simpson back there. You, you could have put, <laughs> you know, you put Dylan Lonergan back there, you could have put Austin Mack back there against that defensive front and what they were doing, getting with, with our offensive line getting whipped like that, right. With that secondary playing and doing what they were doing, I don't see no quarterback on our roster with that scheme that we had last year being successful against that team. And there I was no that. quarterback in the country that played well against that against that defense. And if we're gonna say, "Oh well, Ohio State's quarterback played well," oh, we're gonna talk about the we're gonna talk about the eight or nine times where he kept throwing it behind Marvin Harrison Jr. and he had to literally climb back in order to bail him out. He had a bail he that he bailed him out while being bracketed. While being bracketed by two defenders for the entirety of the game, they had somebody, I think it was Will Johnson, shadowing him wherever he went, in the slot, out wide, and they always and he always had a safety over the top to help. And that, and literally the only person that could get open, because not, not Noah Mecca Abuka, not any of those IMG players, he Marvin Harrison was the only one that was constantly getting open, even during it. And he still kept throwing it either over the over either over over his head, either behind him. He had to fight and claw in order to make those impossible catches against Michigan. He even had a nasty one-handed snag while being bracketed. Like you, you know what's crazy, Jay? Tim said Tim guy said something that I think a lot of play a lot of people forget in the fan base. Seth, not Seth, but Ty Simpson admitted in so many words that he was not ready after that USF game, even though they won, even though we won that game. Ty Simpson was humbled to a, a great degree. And, and that's that's what I love about Ty Simpson. The fact that he's sticking it out and understanding this process is awesome for him. I'm telling you, Ty Simpson will be a Heisman contending quarterback, not this season, but next season. Because of his willingness to sit back and say, hey, maybe I do need to check myself. Maybe my energy... And what I think I'm supposed to happen after a play call is not really what it is. Ty Simpson is the, is the coach's son, man. When you can tell Ty Simpson, hey, you missed this read, he likes that. He likes the fact that you told him that he could miss a read. But what you can't tell Ty Simpson is his ball wasn't good because he got the best ball in the room. We're not going to deny that. He got the best arm in the room. We're not going to deny that. It's, it's processing for him. He may dissect it, but it's not at the rate that it needs to be dissected so the play can be efficient. And that's what people are, are failing to realize when with the difference of Miro and Ty Simpson. I love the fact that Ty Simpson is embracing this. I'm the best. I'm the best second back. Uh, sec or, I don't even think he's calling himself a backup. I'm the best quarterback. If you need me, I'm ready. Ty Simpson has an attitude about himself that I don't have to be a starter to show my value. This year, he don't have to be a starter. He don't have to take the first snap to show his value. 
And that's an awesome thing to have. Mac Jones did that for four years at Alabama. Four years. There's no way you're telling me that Mac Jones was a perfect QB. And then 2020 come around, he just it just comes to fruit. He went through some growing pains. Ty Simpson going through some growing pains because he has the makeup. He has the build. He has the arm. He has everything, just like Mac Jones. The footwork is shaky from last year. We saw that in USF. We saw it was shaky. But then, and then Robbie, Robbie, you want to get in this boat with, with Seth? I mean, we got room. We got room on that boat. Don't be coming for us. We having, with this family time. You can either come in and join or you, you might want to take yourself out. Because I'm telling you, this is family time. We we really out here. Who this with the super chat? We got Ephraim Davis with another 50 bomb. Any high schools using helmet communications? I don't hold know. Up, I got to give Hold up. We got to give him his applause, y'all. This, this. When, when you come through with 50 bombs, you don't get just regular recognition. We got to give you, let me hear we go. Get my sound effects, y'all. Get my sound effects. Shout out to my guy, Ephraim, with the 50 bombs. This cooking let's, night? Are we, is this cooking night? Where's the, where's the keeper music well, at? Here, here's, uh, let me, where's let me Nas go ahead. Because Seth. Seth, nice, nice to meet you. Don't, don't, don't know, don't know you, but I'm Ty, right? I, I, I am the, the debater. You just wait, the time out, time out. You just tie right try. now. You don't even yeah, try. Yeah, yeah. Ty, I'm, you, I'm, you just tie right now? Yeah, no. Blaze is at boot camp. Um. Okay, so if you just tie, we we about to get some good stuff. Come on, Ty. Well, I'm so a- yeah, this I, I'm I'm the debater of the panel. Um, and and so listen. He asked, are you saying the quarterback has no bearing on the offensive game plan? Oh, by all means, the quarterback is absolutely an integral part of the offensive game plan. But at the same time, it's the offensive coordinator's part to cultivate an offensive scheme that's conducive to success. When we look at Tommy Reese, I don't know where that was, right? How much pre-snap motion did we see next to none? We had a center that wasn't necessarily pointing out the blitzes, right? You go back to the Landon Dickerson days. And Landon Dickerson was phenomenal at identifying defensive coverages and communicating that. You didn't have that. And so at the end of the day, I ask this. Two questions, Seth. One, who did well against Michigan's defense? Now, we talk about Kyle McCord. He was 60% with two interceptions, two touchdowns. He had his moments, but that defense really put it on him. Really put it on him. Your your responses are coming through, Seth, but you've just never answered our questions. We see your responses, <laughs> but you just haven't answered the questions. Talk about so, that part, though. So Rex. what what quarterbacks did well? Because Michael Pinnock struggled against that Michigan defense. And then two, yeah. how did Michigan attack Milrow? Like Coach Sean's question. Because that's a big one. And, and and it might seem like Coach Sean's question, like asking, hey, what scheme did Michigan employ to attack Milrow? That might seem like a one-off. But no, that there, there's a reason Coach is asking you that, because once we identify that, we can get into a super nuanced conversation about the way Jalen Milrow played, mixed with the scheme that Tommy Reese employed, and how it wasn't conducive to how Michigan was playing defense. But, but we need you, to Ty. identify what defense... Can, was can employed. I please, can I please call one more time out? I know I'll use all three of my feathers. Can I use, can somebody give me a timeout? Anybody got it? We're, we're in overtime. You got, you, got, you got the free timeout. Listen, this comment says so much. Go back and watch the Michigan game and see how we could have ran. Justice Haynes came in the game. Jay, take it away. This is you. This was your highlight of our post game presser against Michigan. Justice Haynes. We came out in the third quarter, gave that ball, that boy the ball three times in a row. And what did we get? Three first downs. And then he comes out the game. Why? Just like just like just like Ohio State ran the ball effectively and efficiently with Trevion Henderson, and they stopped giving him the game for, for the fourth quarter. That's one of my Why? favorite players in the nation, too. Yeah. Where I love they- Travion Henderson. Why? Because they wanted to keep throwing the ball to Kate Stover and Marvin Harrison. And Adam, uh, and Adam had a comment because I, because I asked, I asked Seth, which by the way, thank you, Adam, for answering the question. Because Seth, for some reason, where Adam at? Did you start? Y'all start starring them most. Y'all know y'all can um, hit that star button so I can pull them up. Yeah, but he, but yeah, he, he gave Comic Court stats because he said he went eighteen for thirty for two hundred and seventy-one yards. Comic Court had two interceptions that game. Matter of fact, the final drive where Comic Court was going down because they were in field goal range. 
what all all the targets literally for to Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvison Harrison Jr., by the way, guys, almost had a career year as, as far as targets that game while being bracketed with Will Johnson shadowing him for the for literally the entirety of the game because they did not fear Cave. They didn't fear Abuka. They didn't even fear the run game, hence why Trevin Henderson was able to have a phenomenal day. And that offensive line did a really good job. Kyle McCord, guys, if you take a look at the throws, it was literally some of the worst throws you will ever see. I am untethered in my rage, knows no bounds. Michael Maybe. Penix, my dear friend. Michael Penix. Come, Seth, yeah. come on, brother. Michael Pen let's not act like Michael Penix isn't going to get drafted in the first round. Let's not Fetch. act like Michael Penix Jr. wasn't Bro, second in the Heisman this, voting. This Seth guy, he is delusional. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, no, I, I, I am I am honestly, bros. We're here, right? We're being straight up. I'm really literally ready to cut this dude out because at this point, he's not even watching the games. This guy is mad that Jalen Murrow is the quarterback. If you claim to be a Bama fan and you you you're not understanding what we're putting out, if you're not picking up what we're putting down. You are just, at this point, you're not even a Bama fan. You're a Jalen Miro hater at this point. And I don't want to go into the extents of what they expose on Twitter, but bro, it is obvious what you're doing. It is obvious. You're not even talking stats and facts. You're talking, bro, let me well, get off. Well, hold on. Hold let Ty, on. Let Ty continue hold to get him. Get, get him, get on, ahead, on ahead, Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 put that comment back up. Go ahead. Because I, I think I may have found Okay, I think I found one of the issues. I'm not going to say it. He don't watch football. No, 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 no. It's not that. It, it actually has nothing to do, neither here nor there. Because he asked, why are we asking the defenses? And listen, I'm fine with principled questions, right? I'm fine with principled questions. I'm, I'm, I love debates. I, I love all that. We're asking you why, what defense they ran, because in order for us to start unpacking the conversation that you, you had originally stated, talking about that Michigan game, we must talk football. In order to talk football, I, I we need to identify what scheme was Michigan running. Yep. What did Alabama do to attack that scheme, or what didn't they do? Those are the things that we need to we need to start unpacking, right? And so we're we're not asking this to pile on. We're we're asking to 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 genuinely talk about it. Um, now, Adam, I saw your comment. Uh, Law school, law school might happen one day for me. One Adam, my, law school might happen one day. I'm getting to a point where I, I'm I'm looking at things and I'm like, man, someone needs to advocate for some things. So we we might we might be there sooner rather than later because I I'm getting frustrated with the state of a lot and I, I I'm I'm ready to go advocate. I'm ready yes, to sir. go out there mm -hmm. and study bird law. Did y'all know that you can't own it? I don't know. It's I'm about to quote. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I, already so, know, I already know you're about to go towards that time. Yeah, I did. So you, know, you, 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 you can legally own a seagull. Now, I don't know why you would legally yeah. own a seagull. The noise, but it's legal. My my wife actually made me a, a shirt, goofball, and it says, uh, Kelly and Associate Bird Law. I have so many. It's always sunny. I have a, I have Ongo Gaglobalian. And it says derivative under it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that show so much. I, I can, big words for me right now. Um, but <laughs> Coach Sean, listen, Adam's right here. He's 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 contributing to the conversation. He's he's asking about yeah, the defense as Michigan played. That's why we love Michigan Adam. Played. That's what this we is right, that's, that's, actual data. I'm saying, meet Adam, meet Adam, Seth. Seth. And this is why we we. This Adam, is why we friend. give Adam so much love, y'all. This is why I love to go. Now, I'm not saying I don't. Adam has been rocking with me since I was on the Bama standard. I, Adam knows how much I've grown when it comes to the, the delivery of my points. Because I used to be mostly engaged with a lot of my points. But now I've learned through Ty, through Jay, like really, through those two, these two guys, right? Wait. That way. So, look, through these two guys right here. I've learned how to debate on this platform. Now, me and Coach Sean, we usually don't care about the the. You get what I'm saying, Sean? You know what I'm talking about. We 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 yeah. debate barbershop style. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. We I have to learn this side, so I've learned this balance. And when we get guys like Seth who bring no stats, no facts to the debate, it lets you know where their mindset is. And I love exposing guys like this because. 
you can't tell me you're a Bama fan. And look at Jalen Murrow against Kentucky, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Tennessee, where he had his best completion rate. Oh, he going to answer now after Seth told him. <laughs> what? Seth, you all right, man. After Adam done told you what the hell. Was... Stop it, Seth. Come on. Adam done already gave you the Get answer him. to the test. Get him. He's 10 Seth. minutes. Listen, I told him it was 28 second delay or whatever the time. I said, it's, I think we have it set for 28 seconds. Ty, you know, you run stream yard sometimes, right? Oh yeah, twenty eight second delay is the is the best we gonna get. I gave him that twenty eight second plus, and he did not. It, it's been 47, 47 comments in between him and his response. There is no way this dude, this boy, hey, Seth, uh, uh, listen, I, your I, Google, I think your just, Google, your Google searching skills are just as trash as your evaluation of Jay and Mary. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, I think we're yeah. just getting trolled. What you about right? to say, Ty? Get on him, Ty. Well, I, I think we're just being trolled. I think it's one of those things yeah. where now, you know, it is yeah. what it is. There's differences of opinion and everything, and that's all well and good. Um, yeah. But it is what it is. I, I sent uh, in the private chat, right? Um, but we've had some people, gentlemen, asking about Brailsford. And, and this is what I'll say in terms of Brailsford. It's, uh, we, we don't know what's going on. We, we have no idea what's going on. The only thing that we were told is that he wasn't at practice. He wasn't there. And it was confirmed. So John Smith, for the guy that keeps talking about Ty Simpson stats at practice, was Brailford at practice? Um, uh, Seth did. And I'm, 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 I'm about 100%. This John Smith dude on Twitter is Seth in our chat. Um. Was Brelfer at practice, according to your inside connect? Because we have 11 media person personnel who cover the team that have been covering the team for eight plus years now uh, that have confirmed that he was not there. And then he comes out and he makes a statement that he wasn't there. Nothing official on Twitter or on Instagram then, but Brelfer is coming out and people close to his camp are saying that he's – ready to get into the transfer portal. If he doesn't show up for Monday practice, and mind you, I'm going I'm to look at the number. Sean, I know you was talking about it earlier. You said uh, that he, he we couldn't find his number. He was out there. That, that first practice when I when we got clips, that was him. Other other than Brockemeyer, that center guy, that was Brailsford. So I haven't seen that guy the last two days that we got to see practice. And mind you, Coach Smook is Coach Coach Smook is the guy like I just go with the vibe. So if I need to walk into the practice facility to shake hands with somebody, that's what I do. And I haven't been rap, reprimanded for it, and I haven't done anything outside the lines of what they say. My phone, I get, I turn my phone off. Coach uh, Ty, you remember I called you that day after I came out the facility and my interaction with Courtney Morgan. I couldn't tell y'all about it in real time because. I had my phone turned off. They took my phone. They do. Bama is really legit with how they handle stuff. So I come out of that practice and I don't see Brailsford. I'm like, why is Rock Montgomery taking second team snaps at center? I asked Coach Sean. I said, hey, you heard about Rock Montgomery? What What you told me, Coach Sean? Yeah, Rock. I mean, I, I yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Rock. I mean. I, I didn't realize rock. it was gonna be so fast. Yeah, he's right. doing rock. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like we yeah. we were we were confused at the fact that this young man was at guard, literally listed as a guard on the roster. Yep. Why is he taking center steps with second team Why? on yeah. this Friday? Yeah. And so, your boy RJ, I talk to him every day now because he he realized who I am now, and I told him who my boy is. I said, I said you, I said chap, you know, you know Sean. It's like, yeah. He told me, look out for you. I, I thought you had a low haircut. I said, no, nah, that's the other black dude on the panel. I'm the one with the hair. <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you right, you right. And, but, but he, I mean, he looks out for me. There's no secrets, y'all. Like, Mama Football on YouTube is going to bring you the real. But at the same time, if it don't fit our narrative, it doesn't hurt us. We got our speculation like everybody else. But when the truth needs to be told, the truth is told. Parker Brailsford is literally scared. James Brockemeyer is doing his thing. And why is that a problem for Bama Nation? Coach Day, why is that a problem? I Look, Jay, 
Jay don't want to talk. He want to get at Seth still. I, I see it in his eyes. He want he wants Seth neck, boy. He what, wants. What, what I will say is I, I don't want to put out anything in terms of until we know like anything on Parker, what a reason is, what anything like that is, right? What we do know, though, is someone said that he was at the scrimmage Thursday. Um, who was that? Justin says Parker was at the scrimmage Thursday. Justin, from multiple sources, I, I don't believe he was. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't Ooh. at the scrimmage. He wasn't. Like, listen. Yeah, I, that, I heard it. Yeah, then. that's that's from it, multiple different sources. If, he wasn't if there. Tony Sakalis, and I'm telling you, this is the leading – this. This Bama outlet, this reporting source for Alabama football is the top. They have the top subscribers right now. If Tony Sakalis is ready to put out an article about a player not being at practice, mind you, Jaheim Otis hasn't been, hasn't practiced a day since this spring training started. And everybody thought he was leaving. No, Jaheim Otis had an injury. Go look at Tony Sakalis' article on Jaheim Otis not being able to practice and how they don't have a plan for him to be involved in spring training, this whole spring practice schedule. Jaheim Otis, there's no, there will be no sighting of this. Tony Sakalis is the first one to publicly promote this. Y'all remember me telling y'all, I ain't see Jaheim. Y'all remember, Coach Jay asked me, I mean, uh, Coach Sean asked me, What's up with Jaheim Otis? We were live yeah. together doing transition of a segment. I said, I didn't see him. I don't know what's going on with him. I walked in. He laughed at a joke that we made crossing paths, and he was never on the practice field. I said this on live. Tony Sikalis came behind us two days later and confirmed that Jaheim Otis is in uh, rehab protocol, physical therapy protocol. We mm. won't see Jaheim Otis on A-Day. If anything, he might suit up. He might go through warm-ups. He's not going to play a snap in A-Day. There's no need to when you have confidence in a guy like that. He's only going to play 15 or 20 snaps a game this year. And those 15 or 20 snaps, he's going to be effective. There's no reason for Jaheen Otis to play 50, 60 snaps. But you got guys like this John Smith guy, this, this Seth Justice guy that's coming off with this off-the-wall stuff that 11 reporters have confirmed of the opposite and he comes off the wall with this this is why i love mammoth football on youtube and our family because it, it's like yeah expose yourself we want real over here you can take that fake stuff to the other net the, the other channel we want real over here ty hayes you 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 hit it on the head there's no reason to lie about what's happening at practice why 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 lie why 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 try to create a narrative that's not there you get what i'm saying like it, it bothers me to that point so, yeah, that's that's why. And especially when it comes to Parker, um, I don't know what's going on. That's why I'm like, I think that the best approach for us right now is just to, you know, we, we can comment on what's already out there in terms of like he wasn't there for the scrimmage. That's what we that's what we've been told. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. Sources. Yeah. And, and he'll confirm it too Monday morning. I guarantee you we'll have something confirming where he's going to either release a statement that uh he's injured or something of the other nature and then at the end of spring quarter the the thing and this is what i want to transition to guys all three of us all four of us i think we need to talk about this so we can dive into it josh pate the most reliable resource when it comes to sec football rumors and and happenings is talking about this whole spring portal and how it's going to kill College football is going to change the landscape of college football. <clears throat> I want to hit and, and, and Ty. I know you got great insight. I know you tight with Josh. I want to go to Jay first because Jay had some comments earlier that I mean, not that not today, but uh I think it was Tuesday or Monday when you were on Jay about Josh Pate's uh take on college football in the portal mm -hmm. and your 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 uh what you call it, the uh what you call it the, that judgment that day. judgment day. Jay, lead off with it. And have you heard Josh Pate's comments about Portal? Oh yeah, he's he basically he's basically been uttering what I've been saying what, 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 since January, since we lost Coach Nick Saban. Everyone's panicking. I'm like, just be patient. Wait your turn. Everything will fall into place in April 17th. Because I'm telling you guys, when once that portal opens, you are you are opening Dante's Inferno. 
it is about to be hell on earth. And if you, I don't know if you guys saw the news, but there's three players, three big time players that are expected to enter the portal by the time that spring window opens up. It's already happening. It, it's already you guys are not even recognizing it yet, and it's already happening before your eyes, guys. Just be patient. Wait a little bit longer. There's a reason why I had that black mask on. I'm showing you a preview of what's about to happen because I'm telling you on April 17th, I'm going all black. It'll be all black. You gonna have a black forces on too, bro, bro? Uh, it's on everything. I'll, I'll be all black. I have like I'll have like a, I have a tall black oil that I can put right in front of the camera to just <laughs> just to kind of let you guys know. I promise you, it will be all black on April 17th, guys. Dante's Inferno will happen. I'm telling, trying to tell you. But Josh Pate literally came on and said it is going to be hell on earth once that portal opens up. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it is wild. It is going to be wild. And like I said, we may we we, we may be a part of it too. We may have. I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we lose a couple uh, some players here and there because of how competitive this this spring. Guys, we've never had anything like this. I don't think we've anything had anything like we're, what we're about to have in this spring window. And the more, and again, that's called, that's the NCAA's fault. That's their fault because they continue to once again, they they try to give all these 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 power conferences just a way out. They're trying to give them a way out. They're trying to give these players a little bit of a way out. And the more windows and the more recruiting windows that continues to open up, the worse that is going to get. But I'm telling you, it will be the it will be in the benefit of Alabama. The more and more that the NCAA continues to provide this crap the more and more these power schools, right? Because the whole point of it is to close the gap, right? Close the gap from these other schools compared to power five schools, but you're only going to widen the gap. The more and more uh, uh, installments that you continue to add, you're just going to continue to widen the gap. And April 17th, guys, it will be Dante's Inferno. It will be hell on earth. And I cannot wait for that day. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get coach Mook. I'm trying to get him to add the game of Thrones music. Uh, if we can get some Lord of the Rings sort of uh, soundtrack, it is what it is. Thanks, Coach Jay. I, yeah. I, I can promise you this. I am wearing all black. We'll have the black oil right in the, right on the camera site, and it, it will be. I'm telling you, I might we might I might be it might be 24 hours. I, I might be a, it might be a 24 hour stream. I might go 24 hours because I need to see this. I need to I need y'all to to witness what is going to happen. It is going to be hell on earth, and I can't wait for it. I already got a circuit on my calendar. Every time I open the fridge, I just look at it. I look at Judgment Day staring me right on my face, and I'm like, oh, yes. Just one, just one more day. Just be patient. Everything will settle into place. And I can't wait. Uh, stop taking your glasses off, son. It is not going to get no more clear. He keep wiping his glasses. <laughs> man, for some reason, them, 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 they keep fogging up or something, man. I don't know what the hell going on, man. You see, 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 see Coach Mook, that's evidence. That's that's heat from Dante's and <laughs> That's the, that's that's the transfer portal. I think it's that's this damn ring light. Right it's this what? damn ring light, man. That is Go heat. Jay. Yep. Ty, I think this ring light is doing something with my forehead. It's making me hot or something. I don't know. <laughs> so I keep having the good Lord, man. What the hell is going on? No, I got long eyelashes anyway. So it's like they keep scrubbing my damn glasses or something. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, man, let me say this real quick. I agree with Coach Jay. I'll say this too about this transfer portal. Um, my partner, son, play at Georgia right now. He's a red shirt freshman. Um, you know, he's a three star kid. He may or may not play. You know, no disrespect. I don't know if he'll play. Uh, he was recruited right out of Columbus. Um, he even said, you know, it's a lot of kids on the roster that's unhappy, you know, blah, 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 with the playing time, with the money. I think Josh Pate hit the nail on the head. I think it's, I think this is a problem all around the country texas georgia all your major hitter schools you probably got kids who are unhappy because of the playing time and when that portal opens you especially with this caden proctor stuff all caden done was sort of give people um that green light like oh yeah it can be done so i think kids i think it's true what coach jay say i think it's gonna be a a, a, a um you know it's gonna be a lot of stuff going on when that portal Armageddon. Opens, man. Yeah. Armageddon. It's yeah. the end of the college football world. I'm telling y'all, man. Listen here, brother. Listen here. Nah, listen. The elephant is in the room, brother. I didn't turn into Buford around this mother. Listen here. I might change my 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 hashtag to uh my at to Buford. Listen here, brother. All you naysayers. <laughs> Ty. <laughs> Ty. What's up? Your girl down there acting up, ain't she? 
No, I just I got the like I sent you earlier. This tattoo is just peeling everywhere. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I, what I, you I'm get, Tom? Making, what you get? I'm just fire. Sure All right. I, 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 I can it, guys. I'm All fine. Hold on. What Hold do you on. get? I'm a screenshot it. I'm a I'm a screenshot don't, alert. Don't, don't mind my my you know pasty legs in the photo. There's a lot of light <laughs> in the picture, and I'm I'm white. What do you want from me? It ain't bad. It ain't bad though, bro. It ain't what bad. You get, though. I'm about uh, to show y'all. Well, it's actually funny because Goof says bird law tattoo. Well, there's a bird in it, and I, I actually Goof. I really want a a, a rum ham tattoo. I really want a rum ham tattoo. You got a Twitty bird tattoo? It's not a Twitty bird. Don't you do that? You know no. what? It's funny. Actually, I actually, I actually, for a bet, I, I got a Twitty bird tattoo right on my ass. Oh, back in the day, but fire! Yeah, oh, I got fire. the. Got the that, one that, shin blasted, getting right the here. other shin blasted three, next, three, four. next month. This is tough right here. They are look right at the detail. Yeah, that's tough. Look right. at the detail, y'all. This is tough. I don't care what y'all say. That's tough. Yeah. I love that. Right. So, so let me tell y'all. So I've been I was I've sitting been, in the chair whenever Caden Proctor transferred, and I'm sitting Coach there Luke. listening to music, like, oh great, this is perfect timing. What's up, bro? Let me ask. Let me ask Ty and Jay a question. I got yours. I know who. I ain't gonna say Coach Smooth because I don't want y'all to know what it is. I asked the chat earlier. Let me ask Ty and let me ask Coach Jay. Going into this next season, you know we got a couple of road games. You know we got a couple of home games. Obviously. Oh, that's a good one. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I just want to know what Ty. I'm anxious to see what Ty. I think I know what Coach Jay is gonna say. I want to see what Ty say. I think I know. I think I asked Coach Jay this before. Coach Jay was kind of on the same page with me. Let me ask you a question, Ty and Coach Jay. Out of all our road games, right? What is the one game that you are weary of that that you have caused to pause for? I told Coach, you know, Coach Smooks was Tennessee, and he made me aware of how good I I didn't even know until he brought the points up of how good Tennessee is going to be. Mine Man. was Oklahoma. What about you and Coach Jay? Go Ty first. Go Ty. Man, oh man, oh man. That's a great question. Do so I need to put a schedule up? Y'all want me to put a schedule up? If you could, oh, yeah. yeah, that'd if be could, great. That'd so be I'm, I'm cool. looking at it right now. Um, OU is going to be an interesting one because it's a new venue, right? Like it, it's, it's a new venue. Um, but when I look at this. They're going to be excited, Ty. They're going to be excited, be excited. and it's, it's later into the season, but I think mm -hmm. that that's going to just going to be an amazing matchup, like an amazing yeah. matchup. To me, that one is less daunting than it is like yes. super, super exciting for both sides. Yeah. yeah. Everything in me always wants to say LSU because a night game at Death Valley, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a heck of a stadium. But here's my question, guys. LSU is in a position where they have to – everybody asks about Bama's questions. And fair, Bama has questions. Let's ask them. Let's talk about it. What about LSU's questions? You got to replace Jaden Daniels. You got to replace Monique Neighbors. You got to replace Brian Thomas. Your defense was dog water last year. You got to replace yeah. all of that. I think Tennessee is a good answer because even though I have questions about Tennessee's offense, I think their defense is going to be decent. I don't know how yeah. good, but they were pretty darn good this year. That man, that is a fantastic question. Maybe Tennessee, because Neyland can be a hostile environment and they might have a, a defense. Whereas LSU, as, as much as I know LSU is like a, a daunting place to play, I have a lot of mm -hmm. questions about the Tigers this year. They lost right. a lot, man. They lost a lot on the offensive side. Their defense had a lot of young, yeah, a lot of young guys when we played them. And you see how Miro ate them up. Uh, I I say I don't I didn't even give LSU a thought because Milro is familiar with that style of defense, right? Now Tennessee gave Milro problems early, but he just emerged. Our offense was the sputter point. Tennessee gets to see us a little bit earlier than a lot of these teams, so that's that was that was my whole take. Coach Jay, go ahead. And then we're gonna hit this super chat. We got another super chat. Oh no, I mean, yeah, my, me, I mean, it was LSU and 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 uh and Oklahoma. LSU because yeah. they literally changed their they, I mean, Brian Kelly, I gotta give him credit. He changed the entire coaching staff. Yeah, um, except for again, offensive coordinator left. He promoted the quarterback coach, which helped Jay uh, uh develop Jaden Daniels. He's gonna be the offensive coordinator. 
So it'll be interesting to see what happens because they're keeping the exact same scheme that they, that they ran last year, but only except that he's going to be calling the plays. So it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to kind of see what happens there. But defensively, we all know the talent that they have. They have a very, very talented roster. And I don't know if Brian Kelly and that coaching staff, if they're going to allow that defense to be – that defense was god-awful last year. It was almost a – Yeah, it was defense. bad. Facts. Yeah. And I don't – Horrible. Horrible. Yeah, it was yeah it was, exactly. It was it was a horrible, right? It yeah. was work. It was it was terrible, and I don't know if that defense is going to be as bad as they were last year. I think they're going to have some. They're going to have some sort of improvement. They're, they're There's gonna, no way. There's yeah, no way they're going to improve. They they have no choice but to improve. Yeah. They know where to go, but um, and I like Nesmire. I thought he had a really really good game. I think it was I think against Wisconsin. I thought he had a really really good game. I loved oh I loved his over his progression, his overall cadence in the pocket, how he was able to kind of maneuver himself. I liked it. I like liked his accuracy. I liked his arm strength. I think that kid has has some upside to his game. So not on, I, not only him, Jay, but he got some wide receivers. We got Aaron Anderson. I mean, and, Indiana, dude. They got yeah. They got they got talent. They got some they got some talent there. So I mean, I think I think this year is going to take a few games, like six or seven games, to really right. find their idea. It may not be into us where they finally just where they find the it. Yep, right. yep. And that's that's literally what I was saying. So I think we all on the same page. I don't think y'all could see that graphic good, so I'm gonna get off of that graphic. But I could talk y'all through what what the schedule looks like. Um, we talking about that, that Oklahoma game worried me, man. It just does. Does. I don't want to. I don't want to lose that game, man. Ty knows for obvious reasons why I don't want to lose that. Why? I do not oh, lose Chris that. is going to. Be I don't want to do it I on don't. his neck, right? Oh, JP too. No, JP. and us. Well, no, J JP is fine. JP is cool. Hey, He's cool. JP is not going to come it's at us like Chris. this, right? Nah. Chris, hey, listen, listen. J ain't going to come at us. JP ain't going to come. Well, not us, right? Because JP. Yeah, us, come. but the fan base. I'm saying. For just us as a whole, oh, JP yeah. oh, is going to kill us. us. Yeah, no, they're, 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 JP they're is going to kill us, and he's going to kill us with the subtle kindness and the delivery right. that direct kindness. Really, I love JP's mad. content, y'all. <laughs> if y'all want to watch other teams' content, go check. What's his What's his uh tag? So you got uh, the JP and Trav show. Um, I'm on there. Uh, they usually run Thursday nights. Yep. Unbelievable job there. Yep. You got the Horn Down podcast. You got the that's Down that's podcast. who I'm worried about. Yeah, is is our is our partner Chris Griffin. And for those of you, when I do my Monday live streams, there are usually two. There's usually a few guests that are always there. Well, really, it's the panel that's always there. It's usually Jance, Chris Griffin, Jay, PG, and myself. And Chris will Chris come is. at our neck for and the next year. This the 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 he's the, an Oklahoma the, fan, Ty. Oh, Not he's only an, that, he's an honorary Auburn fan. Yeah, no, yes. he, he oh, likes to troll us. He and here's to, the thing: yeah. he will. He made a video hmm. a few years ago when they beat Texas, where he pinned. Do you remember this, Jance? Where he pinned the revolutionary style letter, hired a voice actor, and then had a whole set that he was like some general in the Revolutionary War, pinning mm -hmm. a letter talking about how they just beaten Texas. Like he gets creative with it. He spent uh, money to he draw. Is, he is he still have that little, do you still have a little uh that I think what, what, what did he he sent you a towel of an Auburn flag? He said it might have yeah, been he, yeah, he sent you he personally sent that dude an Auburn flag. He is Just solid, bro. I love Chris he, though. I love wow. him. Chris is one of those guys that's uh, uh, against us that you love to have around. Like, you know, you got that enemy that you love. Chris is that dude. Like I love him. And don't I get can't. me started on the Bills, Coach Moo. Don't don't get me started on his trolling Listen, of my Bills. Man. He, oh my he, God, he, is, he, he be killing you, Jay. That's the he only person bad. I know that can really match your energy when it comes to that NFL side with wild. the Bills. Chris is, I mean, I I my That's passion, boy. my delivery, and how I defend Jalen Monroe. I really, I'm I'm gonna give it up to y'all. Chris is one of the guys that give me encouragement to be me when that when it comes to defending my Bama team. Because the way he goes in against uh, the the people that he against is is legit. It's not. It's just not fan stuff. It's facts mm -hmm. with the fan the fan side of it. Like he has a perfect mixture of it. So, but let's get to. We and he's an attorney. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This he mother, can talk. He gets paid to talk good. Like that's that's awesome. Uh, sweet. It's the elephants in the room segment. Only we miss Kyle, Lady T, and Jake. But four is enough to. Be in the elephant room. Let me tell you. I'm gonna tell y'all about Kyle. I appreciate that 499 super chat or 999. I'm sorry. 999 super chat from my boy Jared. 
let me tell you about Kyle. That pretty boy mother freaker. I'm just playing. Let me stop. Kyle is a pretty boy, but he is probably the most doggish of this panel. When I say doggish, he was standing 10 toes down for your boy Smooth the, the, yesterday when we had that little incident where I was trying to get us a sound check for our feed. And y'all saw y'all saw the interaction. And Kyle really took that personal and he stood up for me like I didn't expect it. The way he he barked back, the way he just freaking was like, bro, we just trying to make sure our personality, the people that support our channel get a good sound check. The way he said it, I was like, dang, I would have said the same thing. And it made me feel more confident in my decision to fully commit to this channel. So shouts out to Kyle. He's not just like for people that question his personality and think that he just put on for the channel. No, Kyle is a Kyle is a straightforward dude. Kyle, Kyle don't he don't care about polit politics, none of that. Kyle let me know who was for us, who was against us, who to watch out for. And he has shown me like how to navigate this whole media thing when it comes to covering Batman. And the thing is, now that we're in a new age of Obama media coverage. He's not as sure which way to go, and he's really trusting me to go off my instincts. And y'all see what a lot of the instincts that we coincide and we collaborate and allow to happen, what it produces. And so it's not me, y'all. Kyle is really the, he, he's the he's the captain of the ship. There's no denying it. I think everybody on this panel right now will acknowledge that. And the fact that we have the type of freedom that we have, even the way Coach Sean roast during his B two A stat his B two A segments. The way Ty debates in his debate segments, the way Sean, uh, Coach Jay goes off in his fan reaction segments, that's not Kyle's normal way of doing things. He's allowing us this freedom in his space, and he's coaching us up on how to make it front line. And I appreciate that. For, pre, uh, I appreciate that from him. So, shouts out to Kyle Henderson. Shouts out to T for pushing him. Like she really is like T's an instigator behind the scenes, y'all. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but she's an instigator behind the scenes and she loves to be uh, right behind the confrontational points that we take. And I love that about them. So I appreciate being a part of this team and we got the perfect mix up of everything. You got balance on every side. We know when to turn it on. We know when to turn it off. We know when to be professional. We know when to turn it off and just let y'all have at it. Like we have the perfect channel. And it's the reason why we had 247 viewers on this live peak viewers on his live also i gotta say this robbie i'm still over here laughing i don't know if y'all saw the comment but robbie earlier whenever you said that picture he said that it was uh it was pink Go ahead, pull talking up, pull about up, me up. being so white that it was pink and i'm still over here just laughing at him coming <laughs> at my pacing cool. it's like that's so funny to me we got we got super chats did we get uh we got jay's right okay we got him i think i got another one that i need to get to i'm sorry y'all he said I was paying. Oh no, that was it. That was so it. Funny. Hey, and then the undefeated be lighting us up, y'all. They was getting on my they was getting on my forehead the other night. I I couldn't help but laugh, y'all. I know I got a canvas. We got a canvas. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It's so good. Uh talking to self, ignore the troll, ignore the new troll. Oh yeah, bump them. And anytime, hey, listen, troll, when you start disrespecting Auntie Janet or Cynthia or or any of the uh, the fan funders. I'm going to tell you right now, we don't play that. Coach Sean, I'm going I'm to save Coach Sean the, the breath. Coach Sean will shut you up real quick. And I'm not going to even let my brother get put himself in that situation. I'm going to just block you. We don't we don't play that. Don't disrespect our fan for these people that's here day and night support. Wait, who disrespect our who, – who, who does – wait, 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 wait. I, 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 I didn't see nothing. I'm just letting them know. I'm just letting them know, Jay. I know you get yeah, we crazy. We ain't going for, wait, we ain't going for that. We ain't playing that. We ain't nah, playing that. Nah, yeah, we ain't going for that at all. At all. Well, Yes, yes. So as, but, as but, long as it, there's respectful disagreement, we that's, good. That's awesome. We, good. We, we we respect debate. We love debate. We love disagreement debate, but don't disrespect our people. Cause they, they can't ban you like we can. I'm gonna ban you. I ain't even gonna give you the time of day. I don't care. Email them, tell them what you want. I don't care. You disrespect Auntie Janet of all people in this chat, Janet Forsyth of all people in this chat, you're gonna find your way up out of here. You'll be watching in silence, and we appreciate you for your contributions. Much love. Y'all know that meme 
that meme of uh god what's the actor's name and he points at something and he's like no that's bait y'all know what meme i'm talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. that's what i feel about this right here i'm like no 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 yeah, no, 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 no i saw that too i saw that too all of us gave you i think all of us gave the same energy at the same time that's why we squad remember this they you're gonna have some ty i have a slogan that i say you got people in here from other fan bases that's rubbernecking Meaning they come in here, they watch, they don't never say nothing when things are going good, or or or, or they don't want the confrontation. They just want to watch and see and see what we're talking about and see what's going on at Bama. Screen record and then yeah, put screen it on recording. Twitter and be like, they said this, but yes. don't don't put the full statement. Just put the yeah. twelve seconds of us out of the one minute statement. They gonna post twelve seconds of what we said. I know what you're talking about rubberneck and that's called rubbernecking so every once in a while ty jay you'll get these people to drop these weird weird slogans and statements that's to make us react to it right i've yeah. learned social media i'm not as privy oh. as my brothers but i've learned how they do now I have. Oh, yeah. whenever Being blaze close, gets back y'all y'all save all of that for oh blaze. no stop 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 we not i don't think this channel can accept blaze we might need to put that's blaze true. on cold smooth channel blaze is you know what? Seth would not have wanted to be around with Blaze in here. That Seth guy, he he didn't want Blaze. I guarantee you. Kill Tech Nine, another doubter. Appreciate appreciate y'all putting in the work. I'm looking forward to the coaching segment after spring game. Kill Tech Nine, I appreciate your twenty dollars super chat, but I'm tired of you doubting my boy Miro too. Facts, Chris. Facts, Chris Camp. Shout out to Trap yeah. Sports Sportscast. Yeah, I love you. And Kill Tech Nine, no, I love him. I just tired of him doubting my boy Miro. Kill Tech, thank you for the 20. We also had some thank that you, I, I want to go back on. Um, go we ahead, had Hunter ahead. Ray with the 499 saying, I think we pick up some big names, cornerbacks, offensive linemen in April, speaking about that April transfer um, portal. So, yeah, 100%. I think that's where the transfer portal is going to be so interesting, guys, because like Pate said, the thing that he said that scared me wasn't that there are, is going to be movement. The thing that Pate said that scared me was that he said, hey, college football might have to be broken to be fixed. And I've been operating under the assumption that while there needs to be provisions, the free market will reign. And what I mean when I say that, guys, is how many kids don't find a home from the transfer portal? So like now the transfer portal is here. It's new. It's flashy. It's it's the whole, you know, it's the whole craze. But in a few years, it'll all equalize because they'll realize like, oh, it's it's not all. All that flashes isn't gold, right? Like right. it's it's not the best case scenario. And NIL as well. Like we hear all these stories about a quarterback getting $7 million, $8 million. Well, what if that quarterback turns out not to be that great? And That's now you've just spent $7 million off of ego. And I will say this. I'm not going to – I have spoke to someone that – helps nil collectives they own an nil I, I don't know the right word for it but someone that helps facilitate nil deals he straight up told me he and his business partner people are out here spending money to have an ego contest that's what's happening yeah. in a lot so i've always operated under the assumption that things would come back and like the free market as it would would correct itself but for Josh Pate to come out and say, like, what what's going to happen could break college football and maybe we need that. That's where I was like, oh, boy, that's that's alarming. Like, what is it going to be? And thank you so much, Auntie Janet, for the forty nine ninety nine dollars 99 saying Janet. for having my back, coaches, Ty, and fam. Always. Listen, we're all a family here and families disagree. We I, do, I've said this time and time again. Time, Ty, at the same time, when we disagree. It ain't it ain't to open no door for no freaking troll to come in and disrespect. No, there's a difference us. between disagreement and disrespect. And disrespect. And, yeah. and we not standing for that. I promise you. I I you know what? I'm so passionate about my Bama football family. I told, and they were on my personal channel. It's some people in this in this chat that have supported me in the past three months harder than people that supposedly supported me in my Jay know I've been content creator for about five years now. Jay, you've been rocking. You used to come on my Warzone streams when I first started. Yeah. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Coach Sean came on. He he didn't really rock with the Warzone stuff, but we used to go. We used to like kill people yep. in, in in other chats 
as yeah. just coming as same same as some of you are. And then when me and Ty linked up, he's he got to see me on this platform. We was on a different channel, and we went from that channel to Bleacher Report. And when people saw us together on Bleacher Report, they was like, "Dang, these dudes are big time." Not knowing that we were in the middle, like literally at the beginning of the grind. Ty, man, Ty, you just don't understand. When Ty came on to that show with me, I was a fan. I sat there and everything I said, I directed towards Ty. And we had a conversation. Ty said, man, I'm just a regular dude like you. And bro, you got just as much energy and just as much insight as I do. And, and, and Ty said, bro, stop relying on other people. He said, do what you do. And we brought this team together. These four panels, I, and, and nothing against Jake, nothing against Kyle, but these four right here, we really, we really getting it out of the mud, y'all. We really enjoy doing this for y'all because no matter if you like our segments or not, we, we know that we're going to bring some energy, right? But y'all give us the responses we need. Y'all are so real. We love this chat. So, Auntie Janet, when people come in trying to disrespect you, don't think a surprise that we, we stand enough for you. I refuse to let somebody disrespect Auntie Janet. I refuse to let somebody disrespect Uncle Jay, Patriot Life, Marquita, Carla, Moon Rocker, all these Ephraim. I mean, everybody. And I can't say all the names right now. And then look at this question right here. Out of all the QBs, who do you all think gets drafted the highest? Real question. Jalen Miro. Yeah, man. Out of all what quick QBs? On, this, on our roster? On our current roster, Jalen Miro will be the highest drafted QB. Because guess what he has that nobody else has? A 4-2 freaking 40. 4-3 freaking 40. Like you don't, you don't, you don't pass that up in a draft. You don't pass that up. Guys, JJ McCarthy's gonna go. He, JJ McCarthy may be a top 10 pick because of his physical intangibles. Michael Penix Jr., who was projected to be a second round pick because of injury concerns, literally might be a top 10 pick because he ran a 4-5-40. Just like that at the pro day, he ran a 4-5. He went from being a second round prospect. To now being a first round prospect simply off of his 40. So I mean I mean Jalen, I mean Anthony Richardson didn't have the greatest career at Florida. He's a top three pick because of his physical intangibles, not because of what he did statistically at Florida. Jalen, this is why I keep saying, guys, I think Jalen Miller has the big opportunity of being the number one overall pick because you're talking about a 6'2 quarterback and that's 225 pounds. That literally is built like a freaking gladiator. He's literally built like a freaking gladiator that has that has a strong, adequate arm, that has the mobility, has the elusiveness in the pocket, and has one of the best deep balls in college football. If he can just again, and we and, and here's the scary part: we know that he's cleaning it up because we've seen it. We've seen him uh fix up his his his, his overall pocket presence and his cadence. We've seen him fix up his accuracy in the short interview game. If he can just put to, if he can just put it all together and be more consistent. That dude's going to be the, he might be the number one overall pick, even over Shador Sanders. Because yes, Shador Sanders is a great, po he's a solid pocket passer. He has a solid, right? He has a strong arm. And, and again, as a, as a, as a, as a prototypical kind of modern day pocket passer, he can run a little bit. But I'm telling this right now, NFL scouts, if they're going to compare which, which quarterback has the better upside, they're going to take, they're going to take Jalen Miller over Shador Sanders. Because Shador doesn't, I, I've always, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna keep saying this, guys. I think Shador's kind of hit his floor. I think can he get better? I think he can be, but I think when you take a look at what, look at the NFL draft history and what they value, they value guys that have a higher RAS score. Which, if you don't know what RAS is, that's kind of that's kind of the most athletic, uh, that's athletic profile when it comes to the NFL draft, and and, and, and of course those combines and pro days. They value RAS over 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 a lot of over a lot of things. And if you can put together a solid, not not a great film. But simply just average to solid film production with a high evaluation of of, RAS, of a RAS score, you will be a top 10 pick. You will be a guaranteed, in a way, kind of top 10 pick. And if you look at uh, Trey Lance, Anthony Richardson, Josh Allen, and uh, Zach Wilson, Zach, Zach Wilson, who dominated uh, who dominated his RAS score and had a great pro day. The, it's a history where Jalen Miro simply, he's the only quarterback in this class that has the physical upside of being a top 10, of being at least a guaranteed top 10 guy. And he doesn't even need to have a great year. Show solid film production. Show, show overall wise, he just needs to be, he just needs to improve a little bit on what he did last year. And that alone can get him as a top 10 pick. We're not even showing, we're not even showing you guys 
what we think he's capable of doing this year. Because I'm telling you, it is going to scare a lot of people. It is going to scare a lot of people, guys. I'm trying to tell you. But just what he, but just if we're just basing it off of last year, and if he can just be a, just a little bit better, that dude will destroy the combine. He will destroy pro day, and just like how you're seeing from Michael Penix and JJ McCarthy, he will shoot up rock. He will shoot up boards based off of his, uh, uh, based off of his potential. Listen, listen, hey Jay, you you really just rounded up what we all been trying to say for the past few weeks. Um, let's get to the super chats. We we try to round it up. We're not trying to extend this show tonight. We wanted a three-hour show. We got we really we can go about five hours, honestly. I believe it, with this panel, the way we feeling right now, and the way y'all interacting, I I think we can go about four and a half, five hours. But we don't want to go over. We want to be able to clip this, get our hot points. We had a lot of hot points. Super chat. My guy Curtis Ellison says, "What's the deal with Quay Russo? I appreciate you guys. Listen, I'm gonna go first, and I'm gonna pass it quick. This is gonna be a 20 second take." Cray Russo is dogging. John Latham, Tim Keenan, and Tim Smith all confirm <clears throat> Cray Russo is the dog. Keanu Cole, uh, Q Rob, y'all already know what we're getting with them. Cray Russo is the third guy in that rotation on Wolf and Bandit. They expect Cray Russo to be a factor this season. Go ahead. Uh, who want to take it? Sean, you want to go next? Uh, shout out Eric D, first of all. And uh, before I even get on that really, really quickly, since we're tapping out, um let me say this real quick man ebony can tell you the chat can tell you you know i like the vibe with everybody in here man but when you start talking about disrespect like one guy was being hella disrespectful to ebony first before you know before i do you dirty i'm i'm a I'm, before i block you i'm not a blocker but i just learned how to do that i'm gonna talk about you bad i'm gonna do you dirty you know that's just what i'm gonna do i'm gonna, I'm gonna do you real bad and then i'm gonna block you you know what i mean yeah. So don't disrespect the people in green. Don't don't disrespect nobody, actually. Right? Facts, facts, um, facts. But as far as Quay, I think Quay is young. I think Quay is going to learn <clears throat> from, from uh, Q-Rob, from Keanu Coet. I think Quay, uh, Quay, the future is his. Him, all these young kids, I think the future is theirs, man. These kids are awesome. Uh, they'll play. Um, I think he's going to be great. I think right now he might be slightly behind Keanu um in my humble opinion i could be wrong um it's, you know yeah it's, facts. i mean it's it's son you're not wrong because it's just the powers to be at this point like you got so much talent in that linebacker room bro yeah like 16 linebackers that can really start at any yeah. d1 program right now yeah and i think he's gonna be fine i think quay gonna be fine just stay where you at quay you will have your time and um he'll eat just like everybody else will yep Coach Day, you wanna you wanna hit this uh super chat too? Or are you good? No, I can hit it. With Quay Russo, what's the deal with Quay Russo? Um, uh, listen, the, listen, like, like Coach Mook said, he's a dog. He's he's gonna continue to work in. And then, like I said, he's gonna have he's gonna get some valuable playing time. Is he gonna start? I have no idea if he's gonna start or not, but can he be a bit, but again, like we've seen and kind of last year kind of hinted, hinted about this a little bit, we're starting to rotate a lot. And there may not even be a clear-cut guy at, at that that's playing at the ones. We may have to ro- we it's not like we've done it before. Uh the greatest defense, I no, no, Georgia, you're not the greatest. 2011 Alabama's defense, what did they do? Rotate a crap ton from the D-line to outside linebackers. 26 so players got snaps, 10 plus snaps in 2011, yep. every game. See, yep, 26. <laughs> third string guy. Third string guy came up, uh, Jamara uh, Harris, less of those guys. Those it was it was rotation. It was nothing but freshness. So if we can, so again, I think it's a positive sign that we're not really hearing that much about, or, the, or a lot of fans are not really hearing about his name. But when players are kind of telling you, say, "Listen, don't worry about it. This dude's killing it. This dude's a dog." That's a great sign because that means that we have quality depth. Factuals. Yeah, and I'll I'll take it home on this one. Um, Quay Russo is an absolute phenom, but we also have to remember that room is unbelievably loaded. I, I mean, if we're just putting this into complete perspective, let's talk about the room in its entirety. Guys that started out there, guys that moved. Jihad Campbell came to Alabama as a five-star outside linebacker. Edge has since moved interior. Jeremiah Alexander came to Alabama as a five-star edge outside linebacker, has since moved interior. Then you have guys that are going to be playing on those exterior roles, and Quay's got the versatility to do a little bit of 
a few different things. That's what makes him such an intriguing prospect. But, I mean, you have so much talent there. Yonze Pierre, you have Keon Keeley, you have, I mean, it's just Keanu Coat, right? Quindarius Robinson. It is an incredibly talented room, and the fact that you're hearing good things about him, that says a lot because that room has got so much talent just backlogged. Facts. My fault, y'all. Pops call. Y'all know when dad call, I, I, I think it's business. You know what I'm saying? Hey, one thing I will say, and this ain't got nothing to do with the comment or whatever thing, but my dad loves this panel. Like, mm -hmm. he loved Koshan. He loved Ty. He loved Jay. He lo I mean, Kyle. Pop Hines. When Pop Hines, because Pop Hines don't do, he don't do social media. I had to force my dad to, to get active on his Facebook. I had to force my dad to, like, create a Twitter and he still don't get active on that. My dad is an influential personality. Like his, his spot in the military and his spot on the religious side, you know, Christianity, he, he affects a lot of people. A lot of people look for his word on a lot of stuff. And so when he comes in here and y'all show him love, that means a lot to me. So I appreciate y'all on that aspect. But when my pops come in here and say he's proud of what he, what his son doing, man, Sean don't how I feel. He he know he yeah. we the talk, man. So when when pop say keep going smooth, when 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 dad don't call me junior, when he called me smooth, I know I'm doing good. So I don't even care what anybody else say. When dad called me smooth, I know I'm doing good. And it's it's this team, bro. Jay, Ty, Sean, Kyle, T, Jake. We are freaking. We the super team right now. And I want y'all to embrace it, fellas. We on this panel right now. I want y'all to look at me in my eyes. Embrace it. We are different for a reason, y'all. And, and, and I don't want y'all to, to waver in what y'all do and bring to this panel. I want y'all to keep going because we really going to take it to the next level. And embrace this jump, man. Undefeated. The way y'all interact, keep, keep doing it. Embrace it. Embrace it. We are different. We are different for a reason. The panel was fire. Crimson Watch. She even came. Listen, Crimson Watch. If y'all haven't tuned in to my sis, I, I hope I don't know if this is her channel, but there is a channel, Crimson Watch. Y'all know who I'm talking about. The female, she get the reactions. She is, she is lit. She is lit. But if this ain't her, then I'm sorry. But I know Crimson Watch is the name of her channel. Um, what else? The chosen ones for real, for real. Keep bro, keep going. Do wop shawty. Everybody. I mean, we we appreciate y'all. I don't want to get the big head, but I know this this is different. And Ty, you've been a part of some like Ty won't tell this story publicly, but I will. Ty had an idea with a major corporation. They stole, literally stole his blueprint, and that's what they're thriving off of right now. And Ty hasn't taken it to the social media. He's literally just been kept his head down and grinded. He's here on Bama Football on YouTube, and y'all support him. Like no other. And I appreciate that because Ty, with that around the table stuff, that, that around the table sports stuff, if y'all see it anywhere else. I think Ty told me about that. Yeah, that was fire, man. It wasn't even about him telling about it. It was like we yeah. had a conversation and then three weeks later, I see this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's I what I'm saying. What he was yeah, literally man. talking to me about. I see it happening with somebody else who doesn't even bring the same energy, doesn't bring yeah. the same insight, doesn't have the connects, and they just throwing off bull crap yeah i mean it's it's crazy but this industry kyle has assembled a team of dogs that have really been overlooked or downplayed and we are we we in it for the passion we don't care about the clout we really for the passion we love bama football and at the end of the day y'all gonna get the real y'all gonna get the real when it comes to recruiting y'all gonna get the real when it comes to team progression y'all gonna get the real when it comes to the coaching staff like, we're going to give you the real feel of what it is. And I appreciate y'all for appreciating that. So, as we close out, y'all want to do final statements or we want to have a rap battle? One or, one or two. Chat. Let's let the chat. Let's let the chat decide. I'm going to put y'all on the spot. Listen, Blaze isn't here. So, no, the rap battle is no, no, not going to no. go well. Ty, you don't get to escape this when you stay here. Oh, no. Chat. One for closing statements or two for rap battle. We got beats in the background. I want one for the rap, uh, for the closing statements, and two for the rap battle. Right now, go run it up, run it up. We gonna get them a freaking uh, about a minute to to uh, <laughs> comment. I'm putting them on the spot because Jay, nobody's prepared for this. I wasn't even prepared for this. They said two. Single guy says two. That's one for two. 
Uh, we got one. So we two. We got three, four two for two. Come on, keep count. Five for two. Oh, they want rap battles. I feel rap battles coming. I feel rap battles coming. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but I'm not a rapper. You are a rapper, Ty. Sweet. What beat, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. What, beat, what beats do we have? Listen, I got one. I got one. I got one for us. I got one for us. There's only one beat I go off on, dog. We we got to get that. No, we got to get that either mute. That, that Listen, either this, is a, this is a copyright free beat too, so we not gonna get. We not gonna get. I'm banned. gonna hit y'all with the super hot sweet dollar tea from McDonald's. Oh, I drink he, that. Uh -oh. oh, bars. Hold up. He don't even need no beat. Let's go. Go, Ty. They want the bars. Come on, Ty. <laughs> Give us bars right oh, now. Oh God. Let's go. <laughs> no, because. But, Come on, like Ty. Jimmy says, but I'm not a rapper. No, on, no, Ty. don't put me on the spot. Don't put me on the spot here. Don't put me on the. I'm gonna hit that. That, like I said, that super hot sweet dollar tea from McDonald's. I drink that. <laughs> Two and a half men. I watch that. <laughs> <laughs> got a number. I got, uh, he got a four piece. Look, listen, listen. He, said, he got, he got a beat. I'm gonna put it. I'm, I'm bringing the beat right now. Bringing the beat right now. So I'm feeling that look. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. oh yeah, I'm about to bring some heat. Jay, where you went? Oh, he went to put the mask back on. What y'all trying to do? Let me hear that. Hey. Not a girl. Here's a number. Hey. Psych. That's the wrong number. Hey. <laughs> Nasty with it, baby. <laughs> Nah, we ain't gonna rap for y'all tonight, y'all. We go next time when we do this, y'all. We're we gonna have bars. We already got the shiesty Mac, Mac, oh, Mac on. Mac on. Look, look, look. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, me, yeah, me feel it, man. Me, me take this I off. know he's got the shiesty on. Listen, shout out to everybody in the chat, y'all. I love y'all, man. I knew y'all was gonna try to hype us up to rap. We can't do it tonight. We're gonna be good. We're gonna be we're gonna finish the show like we Man, should. you can't just get me in the mood like that and all of a sudden just go cancel the rap battle. He brought the shiesty out. I can't even lie. I feel so bad right now. I feel so bad that I did that to you, Jay. But we not we gotta let Kyle, you know, evaluate and see what he wants to do projected for it. Shout out to Kyle Henderson and T for allowing us to do this round table vibe. He texted me during the during the session. He said he loves the vibe, y'all. So, chat, if y'all keep responding to it the way y'all have, we'll be able to do this more often. This was impromptu. I saw Coach Jay and Coach Sean. It's it's hard to, to hark on these, these topics, y'all. This, this topic talk, it gets, it's needed, right? It's needed. Let's, let's not play it. But it is hard to continue to develop topics that keep y'all engaged. And so, because of that, the only way to continue this growth is to engage with you all. What do you all want to talk about? What do you all want to come in and really hear our real, like our thoughts on? And tonight is unfiltered G14 classified situations, right? Sean? All facts. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me say this before I get up. Let me say this before I get up out of here. Shout out to Jake Merrill, Coach JM, as I call him. Love you, boy. When you out there watching, we love you to death. Shout out to Kyle. Shout out to Lady T, who used to be on the wheels of steel, if you will. Lady T been having, hold up, hold up, son. Lady T yeah. been having taxes. She want to make sure we yeah, get paid, right? Yeah, we don't need no take. problems with Uncle Sam. No lady, problems with Uncle Sam. Lady T do not play about these yeah, numbers. Yeah, I agree. One we thing about Lady T. We don't want with Uncle Sam. We don't want she that. She do not we play about the numbers. Lady T do not play about the numbers. Lady T, I called her earlier, right? And I was trying to get a grab. Hold on, Smooth, because you're going you gonna to be talking forever. Hold go on ahead, for a minute. Go ahead, go ahead. Shout out to Coach J. Shout out to my brother Ty. Shout out to my brother for show, Coach Smooth. Shout out to the entire undefeated. You know I love y'all to death, man. Always remember this. And this and this, this slogan fit everybody on this channel. It actually mm. fit Coach Smoke very, very well. The truth will always be in the details. They get mad at you when you tell the truth. Truth ain't always be pretty. You know Smoke gonna get it to you. You know Coach J gonna get it to you. You know Ty gonna debate you and make you listen, right? And you know Jay Merrill gonna give it to you. That's one thing about us, man. We're not gonna sugarcoat it for you. We're gonna, we gonna, we gonna spoon feed you if we have to, but we're gonna give you the truth, man. These guys are great. 
They awesome. Love them to death. Love the undefeated to death, man. Roll tied right, to you man. all. I'm here. Ty. Man, I'm just happy to be here. Y'all already know. I'm I'm just a dude with the microphone. I'm just a dude disguised as a dude playing another dude. Well, that, that'd be really accurate whenever Blaze is here. That's right, that, a reference. I that'd, be, that'd be super accurate <laughs> when Blaze is here. I'm just a dude disguised as a dude playing another dude. <laughs> Listen, Jay, what you got? Man, I'm very disappointed about the ending. Uh, I, I was there. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to come close to the end. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, guys, uh, this was a fantastic show. We don't mind. Like, we could have gone on for five hours. But, you know, of course, we got to you know close it down. But, man, appreciate all you guys, all the love, uh, including all the haters out there, man. And Liz, Seth, I see, I see you, man, just trolling toward the end, trolling toward the end, dog. I appreciate it, man. We we we, we all appreciate you, man. But, yeah, I appreciate my, my – I, I, I appreciate just everybody just being here. Can't wait, man. Simply just can't wait for uh, the next time we're simply on. Like I said, guys, April, like I said, guys, Judgment Day is on its way. Ryman accidentally. Um, and, man, we'll catch you guys on next week. I swear Pops. to you, if I show up in a Lord of the Rings outfit and you don't, I'm going to be just beside myself. Listen, listen. Oh, I got something for you. I got something quick. I'm holding him accountable. I'm not going to lie. Jay, that Gandalf and, and Smeagol – little look we need that for that judgment day because the way josh paid and everybody i mean it's like everybody outside of alabama haters are are are, are echoing the same sentiments so I, i'm ready for it listen shout out to senator hines senior shout out to senator hines senior the fact that Mr. you said Hines. our name right twice in a row on a I friday swear. night that is lit my pops man listen if y'all haven't seen, if y'all want some inspiration, y'all want to be held accountable, y'all want some real truth when it comes to your belief system. And this ain't just because this is my dad. I, I separated the de the father-son aspect to this. Y'all want somebody to rely on that's going to give you truth and give you some inspiration to really check yourself as far as being a better person. It ain't even got to deal with the Bible. My dad, 20 years in the, ar the U.S. Army, Audie Murphy, Hall of Famer, respected amongst the infantry Hall of Fame members. I mean, there are there are cause man saw majors that wonder why my dad never pinned E9. Like they really, they really questioned the army and their evaluation system and trying to figure out why Sergeant First Class retiree Hines was not a command Sergeant Major retiree Hines. You get what I'm saying? Like my dad, I, I learned a lot and I picked up a lot to carry on to what I do now. So shouts out to you, Pops. Mom, my my guy, uh, he came in too with Pops. Let me see uh, where he went. He, he My Pops ran into him. That's who called me. Uh, <laughs> look, somebody said, Dad is king. Hey, Pops is a real one. Pops is an OG on them streets in Montgomery. If y'all know about Tree from back in the day, that's, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put that out there. He don't want that image. But yeah, Pops is an OG and he's a real, one of the ones that came through it grew up through it but outside of that y'all check me out coach smook on every platform uh we i'm getting my brothers active twitter about to be active during the summer i'm telling you coach sean is getting active on twitter we trying to get ty back active on twitter coach j is it coach j is that that sneaky lurker when when we was jay when you <laughs> popped in the room the other night you seen a lot of people go hush mouth you seen that didn't you yeah, I, 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 I listen. I, 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 I listen. P, for chat, I had to let people know, dog, because I saw I saw some Auburn people in there, man. I'm, I listen. I saw, I saw I, as soon for those who don't know, when you're in a, when you're in a space and you can kind of tell who's in there. Yeah, 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 I mean, trust. Me, I saw Coach Mook was in there. I'm like, okay, he's fine. Let me just see what's going on. I saw some Auburn people starting to talk some crap. I'm like, okay, we, we, let me let me join that speaker. I need to just in case if something gets out wild, man. I, I don't play. I don't play as, with that. As play soon with as he joined, when they realized that this was Gent716 from Bama Football on YouTube, them Auburn fans got, did they not? Jay, yeah. I'm not capping. They got us. Oh, they, they was like, oh, it. snap. We got two two reporters from Bama Football in here? Oh, snap. Let me let me be careful for, of what I say. And they, they think is they scared because they know the Caleb Falk, J, J. Mike Garrett, they are seriously considering flipping their commitments or their interest from Auburn 
into Alabama. But we're going to talk about that next week. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, y'all, from Coach J, Ty Hayes. Look, let me get my angles right. Ty Hayes and Coach Sean and Coach Smook. Roll Tide. Appreciate y'all for hanging out and addressing the elephant in the room with Bama football on YouTube. Hey, that's a fire title, George. I'm going to give you a – hey, let's give Joy his files right now. He came up with that title for this segment. When we get all on the panel together, the elephant in the room, this is our safe space to kind of, like, get off topic and just not be politically correct, but at the same time respect what we do as professionals. George, shout out to you for that. So, with that being said, I'm going to give y'all a roll tide. And my fellas, they're going to give y'all a roll tide, and we out, man. Roll Autobots are out. Autobots dis disassemble. <laughs> Roll out. Well, I'm going to come in here dressed like Gimli. Y'all just wait. <laughs>